Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord for giving us this opportunity again. Oh, by the way, um, I was told last week was powerful in here. I was told fire was burning all over this place. Let's honor the men of God, Ejimi, Pastor Alpha, Benga, and all the people who made that possible. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Just a few just a few things to note and then we'll go to the word just a few things to note um please pay attention especially as regards the forthcoming prayer and fasting um <laughs> praise the lord uh we are not religious people and we are not people who just do things out of the ritual of it. I truly believe with all my heart that these seven days will truly be extraordinary moments in our lives. Praise the Lord. So prepare your heart for it. Um, we decided to add a few things to the seven days prayer and fasting and um, We'll be having other specialized sessions, like four or five of them. We decided to have um, a special session for our children. I think it's, it's time we begin to bring them into... So we're going to have a session for our children. We're going to have a session um, for worshipers and music ministers. There will be a specialized session. There will be... A special healing session also would dedicate a day to really really take out time and pray for the sick and then we're going to have a business session too yes we'll have one day all of this will be morning sessions um, is a year of extraordinary fruitfulness and so we want to really trust God to equip ourselves um, Basically, these are the sessions. If I omitted any, I'm sure that they'll communicate it. But just for you to prepare your heart, all the, all the specialized sessions will be in the morning so that we'll have some time to really, really um, deal with the matters um, that we need to deal with in the night. It's seven days, but our fast starts from Sunday. This is just to honor the wedding that will be happening on um, Saturday. Two of our dear people will be wedding on Saturday. And uh, because many of us are involved in, in what they are doing, the meeting will start on Saturday, but the fasting proper will start on Sunday. I hope you, I hope you understand. Praise the Lord. So that it will not be honorable to all come and then we are unable to to eat and celebrate with our dear people. Praise the Lord. Um, the second announcement, we have so many guests coming. Please, um, especially for those listening online, we, we believe in honor. And please, if there are any, maybe men of God or any public personalities you think are worthy of honor, now let me put a disclaimer very quickly so that you don't embarrass yourself. Um, those who are deserving of honor, if your honor starts from your coming to Koinonia, you are not yet there. Are we together now? That means when we say those who are deserving of honor, there are people by God's grace, whether in the music ministry, in mainstream ministry, in business, or so on and so forth, who... Um, we just feel that it's good we are aware. You can communicate through um, our PR department, our helpline, so that we are aware you are coming. And then um, 
because of the crowds we're still working on ways to be able to manage the size of the people that will be coming um, so that we don't leave um, a senior man of God maybe just standing lost somewhere in the crowd just to give honor um, but then it is still all right if you feel you just want to sneak in and sit down sometimes these rituals can interrupt your receiving there are people who receive better when they are lost in the crowd sometimes this unnecessary honor can distract you and then you don't really receive anything but please let us know and if you are aware of any one of such people coming you can meet the protocol department or our public relations department and let us know praise the lord and then for um Mukhtar's wedding sorry i'm bringing it here we had um, suggested shortly in venues but everything will be happening in blue roof just for you to be aware well, everything the service reception everything will be there once i will just do it once and for all praise the lord are we ready for tonight please pray open my eyes and grant me understanding open my eyes grant me understanding Let me see, let me know, let me understand. Are you praying? Father, open my eyes. I have come to see, I have come to understand. Hallelujah. Growth and, um, and development, whether it is spiritual, whether it is physical, any process that has to do with the transition of a man from one realm to another never occurs by default. Please take notes. This, this is just to establish something before we get to the word. That means that it is not possible. Physics tells us that our work on earth tells us that, that the only thing that grows automatically is your age. Every other thing must be engaged to grow. You don't have to do anything to add to your age. Once you are alive and the time comes, the year recycles, you are plus one, ready or not. But every other thing, your spiritual life, please listen, your relevance, your understanding, your transformation, every other dimension of your life must be engaged for growth to be possible. That means that if this gentleman becomes a higher and a better version of himself you cannot say it happened by mistake are we together if saul becomes paul and is mightily used by god it's not just that god chose him uh -uh. that growth and that transition happened because he engaged certain truths I will continue to drum it in this house why because you see the principles that make for growth for impact and for success are finite please understand this the principles that make for growth for impact and for success are finite they are principles you can piece together and say these are the keys that make for it it is our pursuit of god and our pursuit of knowing him that is infinite are you getting what i'm saying now we will never exhaust the knowledge of god but as far as the principles that make for kingdom relevance that make for our usefulness the principles are finite this should be good news for someone because it then means 
that I can allocate time and know these things so that the only thing that remains in my life is seeking and knowing God no longer learning principles a time should come in your life where your entire time is spent in fellowship and growth with God not trying to be sure whether this is the key to this and that no and this is what by the grace of God God is helping us achieve in this place if you believe that the principles of the kingdom are haphazard or they are so infinite are we together the principles that make for our relevance as far as this dispensation is concerned please listen to me they are captured in this truth and they are finite they are finite that means that you can collect them that body of information and study them and know that as far as these dimensions are concerned god has helped you it is not when you will or if you will arrive is when you will arrive at that point your life is reduced to worship and praise your learning is god your subject is god not prosperity are we together not how to parent children not how to succeed not how to engage restoration not how to speak peace it's a cause if your entire life is spent trying to learn these things because god as a subject is worth your lifetime all of these auxiliary things about god that we study is to be able to give us the convenience to clear these distractions so that we can now focus ourselves on him and his glory are you getting what i'm saying now yes. you will never be able to centralize your pursuit on god and him alone when there are all kinds of distractions in your life children here different things happening in your life and you don't know what spiritual law to engage it will distract you all these things are the things around god they are not god they are his ways my phone is not me it's around me you can learn how to use my phone it doesn't mean you know me are we together now so we must trust god for grace accelerated grace to be able to capture these things establish their results in our lives and then you are reduced to a point where as far as your personal work is concerned it is god only god ever are we together it was a preacher that taught us he says of reading many books there is no end and he says much learning is a weariness to the flesh then he says this is the conclusion of the matter fear god and keep his commands he said this is the whole duty of man let him that glory at glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me not that he bought a car not that he bought a house are we together not that he raised children well all of these things are important but let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, you must trust God for grace and quick understanding. Isaiah 11 and verse 2. Quick understanding. You can understand late. It's still not a blessing. Understanding will bless you if it is quick. Because everything in life is time tagged. You don't have all the time. Spending all my life learning about money learning about greatness learning about leadership as important as those things are you will find out that nothing will be left to really seek god if our generation does not learn this we will be a generation full of principles and no encounter we will have principles of a b and i teach you principles all the time but the principles are supposed to help you stabilize so that you reduce yourself back to the point where you are no longer bothered about what to eat what to wear how to be great 
the principles are finite now you can focus on him he becomes your object he becomes your pursuit he becomes your everything this is the place of power this is the place of true relevance because let me tell you this everything in your life minus the knowledge of god will still leave that vacuum you know many people think that the moment you make a lot of money or you become very famous or you become all of these things minus god you will still be able to go around because we say those in the world there are people who don't love god and yet they are rich you need to hear their honest confession to see how irritating life can be without god god designed man to be frustrated without him is his design is part of his intelligence he designed it to be impossible to be fully fulfilled if he's not in that factor that equation so when someone tells you i'm doing well without god that person is a liar i'm telling you it's only a matter of time riches can deceive they are important you see how many of you have seen little children and you buy a bicycle for your child your child will enjoy that bicycle even the injury will not matter but two weeks later you see that bicycle in the rain he has exhausted it and it's all right that's how life is without god you can get a certificate and be happy and after five years this Koinonia, a place of encounter with the Holy Spirit and transformation by the principles of God's kingdom. The Bible says, the Bible says, while we look not at the things that are seen, you can see the things that are unseen praise the lord turn this song into a prayer lord i believe lord i believe we are believers the believer is one who believes in god Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I receive every word that you have spoken over my life and I receive the manifestation. Please lift your voice and pray. I not only receive the word, I receive the manifestation. Blessed is she that believes, for unto her there shall be a performance. Unto her there shall be hallelujah praise the lord god bless you good evening please be seated hallelujah bless the name of the lord for giving us this opportunity again oh by the way um i was told last week was powerful in here i was told fire was burning all over this place let's honor the men of God, Ejimi, Pastor Alpha, Benga, and all the people who made that possible. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Just a few, just a few things to note, and then we'll go to the word.
just a few things to note. Um, please pay attention, especially as regards the forthcoming prayer and fasting. Um, <laughs> praise the Lord. Uh, we are not religious people, and we are not people who just do things out of the ritual of it. I truly believe with all my heart that these seven days will truly be extraordinary moments in our lives. Praise the Lord. So prepare your heart for it. Um, we decided to add a few things to the seven days prayer and fasting. And um, we'll be having other specialized sessions, like four or five of them. We decided to have... Um, a special session for our children i think it's it's time we begin to bring them into so we're going to have a session for our children we're going to have a session um for worshipers and music minister there will be a specialized session there will be a special healing session also with dedicated day to really, really take our time and pray for the sick. And then we're going to have a business session too. Yes. We'll have one day. All of this will be morning sessions. Um, it's a year of extraordinary fruitfulness. And so we want to really trust God to equip ourselves. Um, basically, these are the sessions. If I omitted any, I'm sure that they'll communicate it. But just for you to prepare your heart, all the, all the specialized sessions will be in the morning so that we'll have some time to really, really um, deal with the matters um, that we need to deal with in the night. It's seven days, but our fast starts from Sunday. This is just to honor the wedding that will be happening on um, Saturday. Two of our dear people will be wedding on Saturday. And uh, because many of us are involved in, in what they are doing, the meeting will start on Saturday, but the fasting proper will start on Sunday. I hope you, I hope you understand. Praise the Lord. So that it will not be honorable to all come and then we are unable to, to eat and celebrate with our dear people. Praise the Lord. Um, the second announcement, we have so many guests coming. Please, um, especially for those listening online, we, we believe in honor. And please, if there are any, maybe men of God or any public personalities you think are worthy of honor. Now, let me put a disclaimer very quickly so that you don't embarrass yourself um, those who are deserving of honor if your honor starts from your coming to koinonia you are not yet there are we together now that means when we say those who are deserving of honor there are people by god's grace whether in the music ministry in mainstream ministry in business or so on and so forth who um we just feel that is good we are aware you can communicate through um our PR department, our helpline, so that we are where you are coming. And then um, because of the crowds, we are still working on ways to be able to manage the size of the people that will be coming um, so that we don't leave um, a senior man of God maybe just standing lost somewhere in the crowd just to give honor. Um, but then it is still all right if you feel you just want to sneak in and sit down. Sometimes these rituals can interrupt your receiving. There are people who receive better when they are lost in the crowd. Sometimes this unnecessary honor can distract you and then you don't really receive anything. But please let us know. And if you are aware of any one of such people coming, you can meet the protocol department or our public relations department and let us know. Praise the Lord. And then for... Um, Mukhtar's wedding, sorry I'm bringing it here. We had um, suggested shortly in venues, but everything will be happening in Blue Roof, just for you to be aware. 
everything the service reception everything will be there once i will just do it once and for all praise the lord are we ready for tonight please pray open my eyes and grant me understanding open my eyes grant me understanding let me see let me know let me understand are you praying father open my eyes i have come to see i have come to understand Hallelujah. Growth and um, and development, whether it is spiritual, whether it is physical, any process that has to do with the transition of a man from one realm to another never occurs by default. Please take notes. This, this is just to establish something before we get to the word. That means that it is not possible. Physics tells us that our work on earth tells us that, that the only thing that grows automatically is your age. Every other thing must be engaged to grow. You don't have to do anything to add to your age. Once you are alive and the time comes, the year recycles, you are plus one, ready or not. But every other thing, your spiritual life, please listen, your relevance, your understanding, your transformation, every other dimension of your life must be engaged for growth to be possible. That means that if this gentleman becomes a higher and a better version of himself you cannot say it happened by mistake are we together if saul becomes paul and is mightily used by god it's not just that god chose him uh -uh. that growth and that transition happened because he engaged certain truths I will continue to drum it in this house why because you see the principles that make for growth for impact and for success are finite please understand this the principles that make for growth for impact and for success are finite they are principles you can piece together and say these are the keys that make for it. It is our pursuit of God and our pursuit of knowing him that is infinite. Are you getting what I'm saying now? We will never exhaust the knowledge of God. But as far as the principles that make for kingdom relevance, that make for our usefulness, the principles are finite this should be good news for someone because it then means that i can allocate time and know these things so that the only thing that remains in my life is seeking and knowing god no longer learning principles a time should come in your life where your entire time is spent in fellowship and growth with god not trying to be sure whether this is the key to this and that no and this is what by the grace of god god is helping us achieve in this place if you believe that the principles of the kingdom are haphazard or they are so infinite are we together the principles that make for our relevance as far as this dispensation is concerned please listen to me they are captured in this truth and they are finite they are finite that means that you can collect them that body of information 
and study them and know that as far as these dimensions are concerned god has helped you it is not when you will or if you will arrive is when you will arrive at that point your life is reduced to worship and praise your learning is god your subject is god not prosperity are we together not how to parent children not how to succeed not how to engage restoration not how to speak peace it's a cause if your entire life is spent trying to learn these things because god as a subject is worth your lifetime all of these auxiliary things about god that we study is to be able to give us the convenience to clear these distractions so that we can now focus ourselves on him and his glory are you getting what i'm saying now yes. you will never be able to centralize your pursuit on god and him alone when there are all kinds of distractions in your life children here different things happening in your life and you don't know what spiritual law to engage it will distract you all these things are the things around god they are not god they are his ways my phone is not me it's around me you can learn how to use my phone it doesn't mean you know me are we together now so we must trust god for grace accelerated grace to be able to capture these things establish their results in our lives and then you are reduced to a point where as far as your personal work is concerned it is god only god ever are we together it was a preacher that taught us he says of reading many books there is no end and he says much learning is a weariness to the flesh then he says this is the conclusion of the matter fear god and keep his commands he said this is the whole duty of man let him that glory yet glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me not that he bought a car not that he bought a house are we together not that he raised children well all of these things are important but let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, you must trust God for grace and quick understanding. Isaiah 11 and verse 2. Quick understanding. You can understand late. It's still not a blessing. Understanding will bless you if it is quick. Because everything in life is time tagged. You don't have all the time. Spending all my life learning about money learning about greatness learning about leadership as important as those things are you will find out that nothing will be left to really seek god if our generation does not learn this we will be a generation full of principles and no encounter we will have principles of a b and i teach you principles all the time but the principles are supposed to help you stabilize so that you reduce yourself back to the point where you are no longer bothered about what to eat what to wear how to be great the principles are finite now you can focus on him he becomes your object he becomes your pursuit he becomes your everything this is the place of power this is the place of true relevance because let me tell you this everything in your life minus the knowledge of god will still leave that vacuum you know many people think that the moment you make a lot of money or you become very famous or you become all of these things minus god you will still be able to go around because we say those in the world there are people who don't love god and yet they are rich you need to hear their honest confession to see how irritating life can be without God. God designed man to be frustrated without him. It's his design. It's part of his intelligence. He designed it to be impossible to be fully fulfilled if he's not in that factor. 
that equation. So when someone tells you, I'm doing well without God, that person is a liar. I'm telling you, it's only a matter of time. Riches can deceive. They are important. You see, how many of you have seen little children and you buy a bicycle for your child? Your child will enjoy that bicycle. Even the injury will not matter. But two weeks later, you'll see that bicycle in the rain. He has exhausted it and it's all right. That's how life is without God. You can get a certificate and be happy. And after five years, the same thing you laughed at, you now hate it. Because it seemed not to give you what you thought it would produce. Then you turn your pursuit to something else, finance. And then you press through and make all the money and ignore God. And then for a while you are happy because you are buying properties. And you can now be at the priority level of living. And then very soon you will find out that things cannot be God. Hmm. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Please listen. Then you can choose to replace things with people. Like a husband, like a wife, like children, like physical earthly relationships. And they will bless you for a long time except for the fact that the jealousy of God preserved a dimension only his size can feel. No matter what else in your life you bring, I tell you this, it will take time, but you will know that life without God is not living. You're all I want. You're all I ever need. You're all I want. Help me know you are me. Listen, let me tell you how God trains us. When you start your spiritual journey, it is God. Then when you know a bit about him, he will help you to know his ways. And the end of your life should be like the beginning, back to God. So it is God. But then he gives you the things that pertain to life, him, godliness. But he knows that somewhere along the line, your children need to go to school. You need to eat. So he will delve from him. He's still there. But the focus for many years will be his ways. And many times we, for, we forget that his ways is not the ultimate. You search the scriptures. For in them you think you will find life. And you will not come to me. Say the scriptures testify. A way leads to somewhere. So when all is said and done with the cars and the fame and the accolades and everything. God says I kept my part. Five years of your life, I didn't bother you so much again. Here and there you had encounters, but now that you know my ways, now that you are not thinking about money again, now that you know what it takes to raise your children, can I have my time back? And he said, Lord, I became famous on my way and I found out that my fame is better than this, this, this me and you. I, I started in innocence, but as I continued, I found out that there was fame on the way. And now I'm no longer interested in you. That's what happens to a lot of people. Even learning the ways of God as the ultimate pursuit is still not the perfect strategy. The ways of God are important, but at the back of your heart, please hear me, the end of your spiritual journey must still be the way you started. In the beginning, God. In the end, God. That's what it means to be Alpha Omega. So right now we are in a season where you no longer may be having the dreams you used to have again. Remember those times, it was not about principle or anything. You were not seeing any attack. It was just all of those encounters. And it seems to be suspended for a while to allow you to be relevant within the context of your... It's not backsliding. He's showing you his ways. Sometimes some of you will still go back and say, Lord, I want it before. He says, I know. I'm waiting for you. 
at the other side. So that means if you focus on knowing his ways, it's proof that you really want to meet him fast so that you will finish with these matters and it will give you room to say, Lord, I'm done. I didn't know that I can be established fast. By the grace of God, I do not have to cry for what to eat again. I'm not coming to you complaining about an attack. I've conquered that. I've found the keys that give me victory. Lord, I am here with you for fellowship. What do you want, son? You, you. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord. It is not only being an unbeliever that can keep you away from God. Lack of quick understanding can keep you away from God. You will be close to him, but not with him. You are around him learning everything. Imagine that I come to your house and all I keep doing is going to your kitchen. I can eat your yam. It's your yam, but it's not you. I can go and use your restroom. I can even drive your car. I will leave your house saying I met you. It's a lie. I didn't meet you. I met the things around you. Those things are called conveniences. When you go to see a guest, you don't go there to eat. But then in seeing that guest, sometimes before he arrives, they will serve you. Does it happen to you? They will say, okay, this, what would you like? Sometimes they will even call you to a table. If you get carried away by the buffet and you sit there and forget that there is a meeting, You've spent three hours there. It was just supposed to solve your problem so that when you spend that time seeing him, hunger will not distract your concentration. God knows that it's better to serve him in your house than a rented apartment. So in as much as you start there, you say, son, let me show you my ways. Not to compete you with Bill Gates. It's a foolish agenda. It's a purposeless, kingdomless agenda. There is no glory to God competing with Bill Gates. Well, that's not your assignment. Your assignment is to rise to a point where the ways of God are mastered so that you reduce sky. Look, my brothers and my sisters, listen to what I'm teaching you. The ways of God are powerful, but if you stay there, you will not know God. And at the end of it, you will live your life in a void that will frustrate you. I asked for children, you gave me children. I asked for a job, you gave me a job. Listen, I asked for promotion, you gave me promotion. I asked to be a celebrity and you took me to the nations. I asked for money, you gave me money. I asked for dollars, you gave me dollars. I asked for revelation, you gave me revelation. Listen, I asked for word of knowledge, you gave me. I asked for miracle power you gave me. And then after all of that, God steps back, different from everything you've had, and say, I'm still here. And many times we say, Lord, do I really need you again? Do I need you? Whatever I cannot do, I can outsource. I have the influence. And God stands back and says, was this all I meant to you? Yes, it is true that I am the way, but I am not only the way. The way is how you start. It should lead you to life. It's a person. The passion with which many people and the slow rate of spiritual transformation is becoming dangerous. It's one thing to be in ignorance, but it's another thing to transit slowly. Time is running and time is fixed. The next 20 years of your life, if you are still learning what you are learning now, it's no longer a blessing. Imagine a man of 45 years in primary school. Say, I can make it. There's, yes, you can make it. There's nobody that says you cannot make it. But you will be sleeping while they are teaching because your body does not expect you to be at that level. 
while they are teaching the children spell uh, this and that and that you will be a nuisance to the people and it will not be your fault let me tell you this the prayer for speed is a real prayer most believers pray for speed because they have a passion to make a statement either to loved ones let people in my family know i am this as good as that is it's not a very valid reason speed that god can establish a man early 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 what is the purpose of delay something an effect on your time not you your time I hope you realize that all Satan is really interested in is your time. Hmm. So he uses you to do something to your time. Are we together? The ways of God are very important, but the ways of God is not God. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. I am Alpha Omega. Why am I sharing this? Because we are in the face of our lives now when we should focus on learning the ways of God first. Please hear what I'm saying. There are many believers who think that every time we teach on the principles of the kingdom, it should be encounters all the way. No, you'll be frustrated. The matters that pertain unto life will hit you and will derail you. No matter who you are, it's not something you can do anything against. You may be wicked to yourself, but when you watch your children ask you questions you cannot answer, it will dry down your life. You see a lot of people will tell you, in 1995, I was the prayer secretary of so so, -so fellowship. And right now, the person is not even born again. He said, God was not there for me. I serve God, but now when it had to do with God blessing my own family, he left me. And God said, no, you didn't understand the sequence. It starts with me. Then at a point, I step back to let you learn my ways so that you can obtain the things that need to give you the freedom and the liberty to return back to me. Occasionally, these things can distract you. That's why retreats are powerful. Because they take you back. And that presence and that atmosphere, once again, God says, I'm still here. Woe betides a man who spends his whole life chasing things, things, things. To look for a car for a lifetime is not an achievement. That at the end of your life, if I say, what did you get? I have five estates, 21 degrees, 30 children, 8 wives, chieftaincy titles, traveled around the nation, and God is just waiting for his name, and he's not in the equation of your destiny. That's what many of our loved ones did. They started with God, but when God was calling them to learn his ways, they thought it was the devil. And they casted God away and said, Lord, I will keep learning your ways. And hunger forced them to leave God. To get back to learn his ways. And the spirit of revelation was not there. And so their pace is slow. And right now they've been 40 years trying to learn how to be rich. 40 years trying to learn how to be leaders. 40 years trying to learn how to be great. So when you say, let's, let's spend time worshiping God. Let's spend six hours praying. The person looks at you and says, are you stupid? Six hours praying. What am I telling God? All that I've been telling him, is he not listening to? It doesn't make sense to invest that kind of time when you are hungry. When you are starting out, God will allow it for a reason. You notice how great ministries start. They usually start with these moments of encounter. That's how we started. You understand? God will not tell you anything about money, marriage, children, prosperity, increase, influence, ministry, ethics, greatness. Leave all of that. It's just him. People coming back with dreams, visions of heaven, encounter, and so on and so forth. But where many people miss it is they do not sustain the intelligence to observe the transitions. 
Listen, prayer groups, listen. Ministries, listen. This is where we miss it. Because many times we think just because God is the object of the pursuit, when he now tells you, start learning my ways, sometimes you can say, Lord, I don't need it because of the excellency of his presence and he understands. That's why how you are mentored matters. There is a pattern of growth. This is what is happening to some of us right now. You got born again since 95. And the only thing in your life now is that you know God. Right now, you are not even sure you know God again. Why? Because you suddenly discovered that while you were serving God, when you started, somebody was giving you a harvest, whether you sowed a seed or not. And now you've been left alone. The reality of being the breadwinner of your family will not even allow you to spend time with God. And Satan likes it so. That's why you hear people say, I used to be on fire before I got married. And this foolish husband or this stupid wife that I've married is the reason why I no longer can love God. No. You used to spend time worshipping God, but now you have to dedicate 10 years of your life giving birth to children. 10 years is not 2 days. 10 years taking care of the children. You just sense that presence you used to send when you were in secondary school. And here's your baby crying too with the presence. And God says, attend to the baby. Oh Lord, but that sweet face. Mm -mm. Attend to the baby. If you attend fast, you will have time with me. But if you, if you pay the price and leave that baby, he will force you to leave me tomorrow. Listen to me. It is not error when God switches you to learn his ways. Hear me. Hear me, believers. It is not error when God just, he does not take himself out of your life, but he focuses you on his ways to say, learn this. You need it. You need it for your daily bread. You will encounter things that will bring delay in your life. So my son, buy a book on restoration. Add it to your spiritual archives. You will need it tomorrow. You will be attacked by the devil. You must learn the principles of warfare. And for four months, all you who all is just worship and God says, you will not even get a new song as a worshiper. Worshiper. Four months, no new song. And God is teaching you on warfare. And the devil can say, I hope you are not backsliding. God says, no, the songs will come when you give me time. But for now, is it not with money you will buy the keyboard? Learn what will help you set up the studio and you can lie down there alone without a landlord knocking your door. So Satan comes as an angel of light and says, have you stopped seeking God to seek things and that guilt will turn you back and time is going. I am telling you that voice that looks spiritual is Satan masquerading as an angel of light using the regalia of religion to stop you from learning the ways of god many of us would have been better spiritually now but because sincerely so you wanted to seek god but you just i i this business seminar and business seminar prayer retreat choose one is a prayer retreat the holy spirit said go there for the business but lord i'm used to spending time at the back of my my house is this not backsliding and he says no i'm the one guiding you and sometimes religion will draw you away and then when those who were in that business session are now rolling on the floor you will be around trying to look for who to help you and your wife looks at you and says what kind of god did you serve that's the question many people are asking in our families you were a reverend for 30 years how did god work with you that your life is such a failure and the result is to blame god this is what we say lord you failed me lord you failed me i spent 20 years giving my life for you 20 years so you begin to love god and worship god every day and then sooner or later all those visions of the presence begin to diminish and then god begins to say sweetheart it's time for you to start learning how to be a wife and a mother lord let, let carnal things not distract me i need your presence god says yes he's a gentle spirit but don't forget that you are going to get married learn the principles and you say no 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 i don't need to your presence will give me everything you say yes it's my presence that is now recommending my ways to learn 
And that person will be a worshiper and a prayer warrior for many years until marriage comes. Then she gets married and the man returns by 6 o'clock. Sweetheart, where are you? And there's a song playing in the other room. And then the man says, what are you doing? Say, his presence. That's, that's, all, that's all I desire. So why did you marry me? Listen carefully. And then you now say, this man is a devil. He's out to destroy my life. And Satan says, thank you for giving me a jackpot in this family. He will wreck that family to pieces. The ways of God are his wisdom to guide you so that you can settle the things that pertain unto life and then you can focus on him. I thank God for giving me this understanding. I am obsessed with balance. I've taught you again and again. Imbalance is as destructive as error and ignorance. This ministry by the grace of God We are where we are by the privilege of God's grace because of the understanding to navigate these seasons. I will never forget a uh, Jimisian, he will testify, you know, because of the way God started those days with me and you know, you know, all those that were there. A time came when God started teaching me these things, even me myself, I felt guilty because all I wanted was his presence. I would go in the night browsing Jewish worship and the mystery of God's presence. Enter in a cafe with my fluffy disc. If I see anything that looks like Shekinah on an ark, I'm downloading it. I don't even want to know whether he's talking about, just download it. And then a time came when in a very strange way, the passion began to diminish. I fasted my life and, and said, Lord, what am I doing wrong that I'm not getting this? And the Spirit of God told me, it's now time to learn the ways of God. I remember when I started proposing some of these things. Around those times, you know, I remember I suffered my own share of persecution. A lot of people just began to propose, this guy has backslidden. He didn't start like this. I, I'm Noel, they didn't call me apostle then. I mean, somebody who will pray for hours now is sitting down. You are talking about finances. You are talking about leadership. These things are a sign of backsliding because if you are really, you should be fresh. I agree. And time. There are many people who were born again before that are not even born again. again. Hunger will always take Israel to Egypt. It's not the enemies that fight them. Hunger. Listen very carefully. If I ask all of you right now, and I say those who are really trusting God for a job, if you know that joblessness is pinching you and paining you and you are angry about what is doing to your spiritual life if i ask you to stand up you'll be you'll see those who they will stand up with the attitude you will know they are really angry say lord I've, I've, I've been serving you what is all this one that means something there is affecting your concentration and i have a responsibility to show you the ways of god and to show you fast so that by the grace of God we can spend time and spend our lives mentoring a generation on how to live listen to me there are many things I've said that people have taught was pride some of them are now manifesting today Micah chapter 4 is the prophecy for our generation and that's one of the things that God is doing with this ministry. Micah chapter 4 and verse 1. Please give it to us. Thank you. Thank you. Micah chapter 4, please. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established on the top of the mountain and it shall be exalted above the hills and people shall flow unto it. Verse 2. And many nations. How many? 
nations here don't just talk of countries they talk of systems shall come and say come no invitation no invitation come let us go up to where the mountain of the lord to where the house of the god of jacob that means the place of encounter but we are not going there just for encounter we are going there to carry over a cause we ignored and he will teach us of his ways the god of encounters we encountered him but we ignored his ways but now we see a mountain that has both encounter and his ways he says come he will teach us his ways and we will walk in his paths for the lord shall go forth from zion and the word of the lord from jerusalem a day will come when the pride of men will fail them a day will come when the imbalance of men will haunt them a day will come when the inaccurate spiritual pathway that people are taking will show and God is building an ark and telling you a flood is coming. When Jesus called the disciples, look at how he trained them. He called the disciples and started by doing a little introduction of himself. Then he stopped and started teaching them his ways. Let's go up the mountain and he teaches them the beatitudes, the ways of the kingdom. He taught them his way so much that one day he said, who am I? Who do men say that I am? They say, thank you. Because this thing has bothered us too. We have learned how to be the light and soul, but who are you? John was so distracted, he forgot who he was. He didn't know that when you learn his ways, you go back to him. And he was offended. He said, go and ask him, are you the Messiah? Or should we seek another? do you not see that at the end of men's life when paul finished knowing his ways and did his exploits he returned back that i may know him it's a it's a principle paul did everything I, I've, I've learned them he was in the wilderness of arabia for 18 years learned the ways of god when he was ready he said let's go they killed him he took himself back to life and got up and finished everything and at the end, he said, look, this is it. But Lord, that I may know your ways. Moses was at the backside of the mountain. The progression, an encounter. When he encountered him, God said, take your attention from me. Let's go to your rod now. This is about the one that's you. And Lord, I'm looking at you. Forget about the burning bush. You have seen me. But let me show you what you will do with this rod. And the attention went from the bush to the rod and he trained him on that rod he said now stand up leave me leave the bush and go somewhere you will come back i will meet you again but for now he would have stayed there and circled that bush and said i would die on this bush oh your face oh jesus when jesus appeared unto saul of tarsus he gave him an encounter then he says go to the house of judah wait there someone will come and begin to guide you on the ways of the kingdom ananias came and he was filled with the holy spirit his eyes were open and he started learning by revelation and when he learned at the end of his life that i may know him john the beloved started like the apostles knowing him and then later he learned his ways by the time we get to the end of john's life it was full of encounters this is the record that God has given us eternal life. And he begins to talk about the divine life. Then in the Isle of Patmos, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And I saw, I have seen him again. He told me, you will see me again. I will come to you again. You need to know this about the progression of growth. It's a powerful secret. It starts with him. And then when he starts with you, a time comes. He says, now just knowing my face is not enough to solve the matters that relate to life therefore i will like like a a preliminary course that you will take in another department for a while if you go to that department and remain there you are supposed to take the course get the knowledge and return back 
I don't want to spend my life even doing ministry because ministry is not an end is a means to an end the end is him listen to me this will help you to know why week after week we continue to dispense the mysteries of the kingdom and every once in a while you'll find out that we'll have extreme moments where God's presence will come mightily and just interrupt the service and allow periods of extended worship just to remind us don't be distracted with the ways and then he will step back again let the teaching continue those who follow that path are beginning to see certain results in their lives you can have the luxury today to lock yourself and you and your children can serve the Lord as for me and my house he says we will serve the Lord you will not serve the Lord when you are hungry because a borrower is slave to the lender the rich will rule over the poor please listen to me many believers miss it at this point they start well with God and then when the Holy Spirit begins to tell them now it's time for us to move to begin to understand the ways of God they think sometimes it's an error no why should I buy a book on relationship I need books on his presence why should I buy a book on management why should I buy a book on church growth I need a book on heaven mine is just heaven and God says it's true but just calm down let me show you my ways Lord I know you are going to call me and because of the encounter I'm having I will have a global ministry God says potentially that's true but that global ministry works on systems let me teach you something please just amplify can you change the sound I just need something I can hear listen help us Holy Spirit when Joseph came listen Joseph was the deliverer of Israel I hope you know how Joseph delivered Israel he brought systems that preserved that economy is that true Joseph left them with a prophecy he said when you are going out of Israel carry my bones he was not just saying carry my dead bones the systems that kept you here carry it along don't leave it behind bone stroke of systems and structure there was something that happened that gave this thing structure over my leadership. I know God is calling you to go to a land thrown with milk and honey as his own people. But on the way, you will need the knowledge of this. Carry my bones. Carry it. Why, why will you dig a man? It's not because the land was cursed. No. Carry my bones. Carry those structures and those systems. So while... You are serving God and you see a book on financial intelligence. Don't throw it. Just keep it. A time will come as you are transiting. Let it be part of your library. For now, you are focusing on God. And God, you want to study a book on marriage and God said, no, 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 no. Let's continue the seven days dry fast. It will not always be seven days dry fast. All the movement of heat and cold in your body, it won't happen like that forever. It's a system. You are in a season where he's exposing you to himself. So all your prayer is full of visions. My hands are shaking. My legs have cold and heat. Carry the bones. You will need it. A day will come when the shaking will no longer be there. A day will come when you will not be falling around the way you used to fall before again. A day will come when for a strange reason the strength for 10 hours in prayer will not be there and you will search your heart and it's not backsliding remember that God must be the governor and the coordinator of your growth not religion you allow men they will delve you into error sincerely so I watch with shock and I watch with pain in my heart the way so many young people especially in Africa continue to corrupt this part of growth they leave Joseph's bones and when they get to the wilderness they do not know how to call for bread again are we together 
this ministry by the grace of God runs on systems and structures and it has afforded the opportunity to serve God and serve his purposes I can imagine the level of distraction that would come into my life if all I focused on was just his face and I ignored his ways let me tell you what we would have done by now I would have carried an offering basket and walk around and say I'm hungry I love God have you been blessed by my anointing yes pastor alpha you all of you people here it's one one million I'm, I'm, I'm not it's not as the spirit leads it's not that I'm bad this is how we carry over in life a day will come when your wife will tell you what kind of a man of God are you and you will get angry and all of a sudden you will start choosing where to go and minister there's one powerful campus ministry we can campus how much are the students going to give me campus minister to many zealous but broke students and the spirit of god is saying i want to birth a revival on that campus but you look at your pocket and he says there is another ministration is, is happening in the u.s and i mean the 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 priority service from nigeria to u.s alone is enough to bless you there's no hearing god again and all of a sudden you leave those poor people and a revival is destroyed because a man did not understand the ways of God imagine that I went to honor ministrations today because of the honorarium they give it's a terrible thing you don't have you will be angry what of the ones that cannot give you anything but you know it was the will of God after you finish preaching you see what they give you I say how much is this say it by yourself how much say sorry sir you see we were able to raise it you, you see it and that bitterness will choke the anointing out of your life i'm not just talking the area of finances alone have you not seen preachers that resign from ministry because they could not be able to raise their children well sometimes they ignore the children when god was saying train up a child they were hearing that word they casted it they were by worship tapes bob fits don moen it's important don't get me wrong and then while they were in the presence satan was with the children that's what happened to the american society when god teaches people certain things he said teach your children write it your children will ask you questions make sure you teach them are you getting what i'm saying now this imbalance has punished a lot of us i've seen men and women of god who organize meetings and after the prayer and fast members don't bring money they only bring vision sir i saw the meeting is success it is done and he said do you know how much the board that is say it is done sir i'm telling you i know what i saw and he will pray with you and go back and you stand there and say god did you call me or not and god says remember seven years ago when i told you to settle down and learn my ways you criticize me god and you criticize everything and because i respect your will i said all right you continue and now the deficiency of knowing that way of god is telling on you now so you are anointed you have encounters but you cannot build a church that works because you know nothing about leadership you thought it was unnecessary until while you are preaching someone is fetching the money of the church and you think that god is that dull to have allowed it happen you're not knowing his ways then you find out that you never can be able to have up to 100 members what is wrong i'm anointed i just came back from heaven remember I say so what you will continue going to heaven and coming back and finding out that there is no growth because something about the system is not there so when jesus was born at age 12 he was in the temple learning learning and then at age 30 he comes to be empowered and begins to do ministry and then he returns back to God from where he came it is God his ways God listen 
God, his ways. His ways does not mean you will leave him. It doesn't mean you will not pray and you will not fast. No. But God, because you are governed with time, you cannot do everything at the pace you started and have the time to... It takes time to learn. You may pray 10 hours every day and instruction from God for five months. But you do that that way, you will not have the time for other things. So you will find out that God has a system because even that did not happen by your strength. And so God helps you. Then you begin to learn. The Holy Spirit says, go to a catering school. Say, God forbid. With all these visions I'm seeing. Until you see that it destroys your life. Son, I need you to learn. I don't want you to, to be an inefficient person. You have to learn the laws of greatness. And you say, Lord, I'm going to the nations. You are not going alone. There are people there and not all of them are born again. So he needs to teach you how to be a sheep among wolves. Lord, I don't care. All I know is that I'm going to be great. Apostle has said it. We will all be great and we all know ourselves. Yes. Yes. It's true. But you must know his ways. So here you are as a born again person. And then you have the opportunity to meet a man, a captain of industry. And you do not know the principles of relationship. You don't know the principles of friendship. You don't know how to translate the reality of God's life to relate to a context. And you stand there. This is an opportunity to not just win a man, but win an industry to Christ. You know him, but you're not knowing his ways. I love Jesus. Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night and says, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. For no man can do these things except God be with him. He would have said, wonderful. Nicodemus said, verily, verily. I mean, Jesus said, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again. So on and so forth. And when he led that Nicodemus, do you know that Nicodemus was a secret follower of Jesus? He learned his ways. He shall teach us his ways. Koinonia, hear me. You must understand the way God is training you. Sometimes you see us sit down and for over one or two months, all the emphasis is on finance and the rest. And sometimes I can almost discern that when these teachings are coming, here's the spirit of religion again. Two months teaching on money. is money everything. We, we need the presence of God. I see the joy on some of your faces as soon as I stand and I say, the Lord is showing me something. And someone is shouting, you know, people just, this is koinonia. Now these are koinonia, not this backsliding version. And you keep allowing the spirit of religion. You see, a student does not define the curriculum. No, your job is to sit in the class with your heart open. Let every other name fade away. Jesus, take your place. Let every other name fade away. Let every other name fade away. Jesus, take your place. Let every other name fade away. Listen, you will thank me for what you are learning. Because you will pastor a people who are balanced. After service, they have cars to go back home. They have houses that they can serve the Lord in. They have influence enough to bless the Lord. Yet in the midst of it, they will roll from pillar to post. Do not allow the spirit of religion destroy your peace. Do not allow the spirit of religion to corrupt you. Do not even allow the biases and the imbalances that we carry as men of God to corrupt the accuracy of your pursuit. There is only one architect who designs this pathway. Jesus himself. The author, the finisher. A lot of people see what God is doing in and through my life around the body of Christ. A man of God asked me and said, Apostle, you are a very strange man. 
there are different churches that you can go to and minister. How do they accept you? Is it that they don't listen to your message in other churches? For instance, maybe a very conservative church. I can finish a conference there right now. And the very next meeting may not be as conservative as. Is it that they don't know? It's not usual for people to receive guests like that. And I tell them there is something he taught me about the body. It's a mystery. Your results show what you know or you don't know. When the body receives you, there is a grace. There is knowledge that has come. This is what I'm teaching you. So you don't become a Christian that will, because of your imbalance, as a man of God, you join the campaign of fighting every other person too. Who are you for? Paul or Apollos? Are you seeing that now? And many of us have been raised that way, sadly. Oh, I am not this man of God. This one in this country is my papa. This one is my this. This one in my... And you join the campaign of fight. Whereas there is something you can know. And the gates of the body as an entity can be open for you. Is God blessing you? This is what you are learning, my brothers and my sisters. You are learning principles principles i bless the lord for granting me the grace to be the one teaching you this because see if i didn't walk in the anointing it usually will mean that i'm trivializing those things because they are not captured in my life that's why it's powerful to be balanced because your teaching will be believed you have a system of defense for every dimension Hallelujah. Tomorrow, I'm in Mina. Sunday, I'm in Mina. Monday, I'm in Abuja. Tuesday, I'm in Eboi. Wednesday, I'm in Eboi. I'm coming back on Thursday. Imagine, let's be honest, in the name of honesty, imagine if I had only two clothes and 10,000 naira for Chisco transport. Do you, I, 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 please, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, is this not, I just want you to think sincerely. Do you know how I will be forced to manipulate those people? I will carry the anger of my pain and say something God did not say. And preach something God did not preach. Not because I am bad. And then, here is the risk. All through the road in the night, 12 hours, you preach back to back, 12 hours. You are back, and then everything starts again. It's not a blessing. I can tell you it's not a blessing. You will never be able to have time to seek the Lord. Imagine that you want to have a Bible study and commit yourself and someone is quarreling and they are raising their voices and distracting you you are in a vision you don't even go far you are back because the noise koinonia let me tell you what god is making out of your life you will love what you are becoming you may not love the training now but my brothers and my sisters listen to me god's integrity is back of what is happening to you and a day will come people will look at you and say sir why are you such a man of God? What, what's responsible for the balance and, and the depth of efficiency? And you will tell them, let the wise man not glory in his wisdom. Let the strong man not glory in his strength and let the rich man not glory in his riches. But let him that glory at glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. My journey starts with God. But I'm careful enough to observe the things that he's teaching me. That will be responsible for my results. And it will recycle time back to help me serve the Lord. There are times that I prepare an average of 18 to 20 sermons per week. 18 to 20 sermons per week. Aside from specialized sessions and counseling sessions 
you ignore this that I'm teaching you, a day will come you will not have messages again as a man of God. And you say it does not matter. And the members will leave. And you will call it an attack. Because you do not know the ways of God. They know not. Neither will they understand. Psalm 82 and verse 5. They walk on in darkness. And all the foundations of the earth are out of course. He said, but have I not said ye are God. And all of you are children of the most high. He says, but you shall die like mere men. And fall like one of these princes. like you to pray you won't believe that i've not even started my sermon for this night i, I, I didn't even realize that the time had gone but i like you to passionately cry think of your children while you are crying think of those called to your destiny while you are don't be selfish it's about you but not all about you cry to the lord Lord, I thank you for revealing a dimension of yourself. But now that you are teaching me your ways, give me the grace to stay. Give me the grace to stay. Lord, I thought the time that I've been spending in the last two years studying, I've even been afraid. Why are the visions not coming like before again? Now I'm learning that it's a season and a phase. It's not necessarily proof of backsliding. I have come to a point where you are working on me. You are giving me intelligence to be effective. Please pray. I want to inspire a generation to reflect you correctly. Hmm. Abarada kata proska de balash. Hebrande gede la kato sada brahas kadabai. My children should not suffer while I seek you. My family should not suffer while I seek your face. It takes time to know you. Oh God, awaken me from slumber so that I can redeem the time because the days are evil. So that I can redeem the time because the days are evil. I don't want to spend my life chasing after mundane things. Chasing after money. Chasing after power. That at the end of your life, when you should be seeking him, you are now learning his ways. They that seek me early, early, they that seek me early shall find me. Hallelujah. The Bible says they are life to those who find them. They are not information to those who find them. They are information to those who hear them. But they are life to those who find them. The kingdom of God is like a pearl that is missing. And someone lights a candle and begins to sweep that room. And when he finds it, the kingdom of God is like a treasure that a man finds gold in a property and goes to sell all he has to buy it. 
there are ways to redeem the time listen let me tell you look at me in the 60s and the 70s nobody people took jobs for granted right from 500 level or 400 level you could come with jobs nobody knew that today will be an information age a digital age that will replace jobs so people had the luxury to not focus on some things but times have changed and the sons of Issachar it, it, there is a generation of Issachar that had the understandings the, the fact that God is not doing a thing the way he did 30 years ago does not mean he's the one he's not the one doing it listen let me teach you this for every dispensation there is a strategy when Samson listen when Samson saw the Philistines the spirit of the Lord came upon him and he took the jawbone of an ass a donkey and he killed all of them when he killed the Philistines he looked at the bone and threw it why do you throw what works I just used a strategy and defeated an army and yet I'm leaving it to wait for another one many of us will hold that bone and idolize it and even when the bone has no life again you will keep moving with it one time he will tell you let the people go through the water other times he will tell you stand still there is always a strategy for every generation don't borrow a strategy that is not applicable joshua had to wait what is the strategy to bring down jericho and he said this one is not about warfare let the priests lead the way this is the strategy there are times that the men of war would lead the way there were times it was not just the priest the worshipers what is the strategy for this generation do you know or do you believe it's the same strategy for everyone it's a joke God who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us through the fathers hath in these last days, in these last days spoken to us through his son whom he has appointed to be heir over all things. So there was a time in sundry times and diverse manners he used a strategy but in these last days there is a strategy. Just because a strategy worked does not mean God is interested in using it again. Give us this day. Not give us once and forever. Give us this day. For every day there will be a strategy. Oh Elijah, for a while it will be at Brook Cherith. That's the strategy for your survival. Position yourself at Brook Cherith and a raven will come. But the, the, the brook is dried up. Elijah, hear the word for another strategy. Otherwise you would die at Brook Cherith. Whereas God has relocated your blessing through another strategy. You held the jawbone of an ass. It killed in 1960. It killed in 1970. But the arsenals of hell changed their strategy. And we refused to go back. Because we learned the principles very slowly. And we ignored the presence. Many people are applying principles that do not have a corresponding power in the realm of the spirit that is why the results do not show i remember the time and i say this respectfully so when god told me i want to open your eyes to see the key to church growth i had not seen it i am look let me tell you something i have studied the largest churches in every continent with all humility the day i saw it i said this is it not the church growth of the fathers the church growth of the future the way they built the tabernacle in the wilderness was not the way they built solomon's temple the strategies are different the goal is that he inhabits them but the patterns are different listen to me if you get what i'm teaching you you will be blessed there are people generations past could ignore certain things but there are generations that if you ignore certain things in the 60s and 70s you could see a a trader keep banana or something and not even be there you will carry the banana put it in the leather and drop the money there but he says the times he says the days are evil 
Are we together now? Yes. You couldn't have somebody just come and cheat you and betray you and stab you for nothing because the pressure to make for that is not there. But the hardship of men has helped them to invent wickedness. Didn't the Bible tell you that the end times will be like the days of Noah? What characterized the days of Noah? Wickedness multiplied. And so you need the strategy. You carry the naivety of decades past and you find out that you are, un you are unfruitful to the church. Listen, let me tell you this. I will use names respectfully and honorably. Papa Ia Deboye represents the face of a generation. Are we together now? He represents God and a dimension of his walking to a generation. If I go to Papa Ia Deboye's generation, no matter, I've, I've ministered many, many times in those circles, and no matter how powerful my ministration is, the people love me, but they may not listen to my messages because David served his generation. Are we together? Even if I cut promises head and carry it and put it back, are we together now? It will never stop anybody from crowding and camping around redemption camp. I went for a conference recently and we had to route through another way because two major ministries were having a regular meeting and the entire road was blocked. It was a strategy for that generation. Everyone that caught the strategy, the results have to show. There are others who passed and didn't get it. It's very clear they didn't get it. So we must stand like Habakkuk. I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower. God, what are you saying for my generation? What is the strategy for survival? What is the strategy for survival? There were no Facebooks. To criticize a man of God those days. But now, oh God, that is easy for darkness to attack a man. What is the strategy? Hmm. Are we together now? Yes. People were a lot more loyal in the times of our parents and our time. They can love a man no matter what is right or wrong. But our generation is a vocal generation. A lawyer can stand up and say you are stupid for thinking we are idiots. He will listen to you and after service he will analyze your message and sue you to court. Because you abuse my privacy. There were certain levels of um, being raw and outspoken that our fathers could afford in their generation. You try it now, you will die because you are speaking to nations they had the luxury to say certain things in certain ways you are not bending the truth you are receiving a strategy because you are speaking to people who are global in context and you must be able to translate divine realities to make meaning to a generation you can't talk to everybody as if you are talking to those who are in your locality when Jesus came and found an agrarian society, he converted the realities of the kingdom into agricultural terms to relate to the then civilization and they understood. Listen to me. Ministry is not just about the anointing. There is a skill. There is a science. There is a psychology for effective ministry. It's much more than just having the ability to do an exegesis of scripture. It's a combination of many factors playing behind the scene. People don't just love you because you are telling the truth. Mm -mm. It is not just truth itself that saves. It is how it is presented. You can serve me water. Please help me with this. There are two ways to serve me water. There is one way. Apostle, please take water and drink. You serve me water. The water is not wrong. But I will hate you because of your service. You did not serve it to present honor. You can do this to a footballer. In the football field. And he will not be angry. It's the ethic of it. In fact, the skill of receiving it will be an accolade. But now when you come to me. And you carry this and throw it. The same thing you did in the field that they clap for you. You do it here, they will curse you. You must understand the intelligence that comes with territory and systems. Oh, 
not there. This is not a pastor's conference. Please sit down. In the name of Jesus, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. The spirit of this prayer and fasting is upon me. Ah. Second Peter chapter 1, Jesus. You know, sometimes when I come looking, which one do I omit? And which one just boils in my spirit? And I'm looking, which one do I omit? And which one do I say? Because I truly, truly want you to get it. Many of you will have churches in the future. You will see how exceptional your churches will be. Yes, yes, yes. The grace that is upon you is, is too much for a member. No, God is training you. I mean, no, 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 no. This is not the grace that just keeps you. You are representing a nation and a territory. So you are listening for the sake of nations that might not be hearing now. Second Peter 1, help us Holy Spirit. Verse 2. Let me just tie up something and we'll pray this night. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord. Verse 3. Read with me. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things. Stop. Read it again and stop at things. Ready? One, two, read. One more time. So, let's reverse it. All things are given unto us according or by his divine power. Listen carefully. All things are delivered to the saints. How? Faith is only a connector to his divine power. The system that makes for reception in the kingdom is the agency of his divine power. As powerful as faith is, faith is like a funnel. Are we together? The funnel connects the container and the one you want to put under. So that's what faith does. Faith in itself does not produce miracles, does not produce breakthrough. Are we together? Faith, you know, is just your conviction and the action you take to validate that conviction. Are we still together? So the Bible says, according as his divine power. Let's walk this a little tonight. That means there are results if I see arrive your life. The agency that made it so. Regardless of what principle you obey, the principle only made way for his divine power. If his divine power cannot be released, there is no performance. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Yes. Let me give you an illustration. Look up please everyone. What is inside this bottle? Water. I, I hope you know that there are different ways to package water. Are we together? Now, let me interpret this. Every time you are thirsty, what quenches the thirst is water. How it comes may be different. Are we together now? Yes. It can be packaged in a bottle it can even be packaged in in you know all kinds of ways but if at all your thirst is quenched the factor that quenched it is water the bottle that brought it and the system of packaging is not the issue is that the central factor that quenches thirst is what water so the bible says thank you according as his divine power listen carefully his divine power does not give some things it gives what that means you need to study what the bible tells you gives all things according as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertains unto life and godliness that means if i am not obtaining i am not engaging something that makes available his divine power listen 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 if i prosper his divine power 
have given me prosperity. There's a set of kingdom principles I engage. But then when I engage them, what will come is still his divine power. In physics, we teach that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. I'm helping you prepare for jam tomorrow. For those of you who are writing jam, you'll be surprised to find out that that's your first question. <laughs> are we together now? But that it can be converted from one form to another. Are we, are we together on that? That means every time you see any manifestation of energy, it is the same energy. It is just different forms of it. That the same electricity can turn to power this and then can produce sound here. That means if I hear sound, energy made it so. If this fan is turning, energy made, I, 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 get, I get what I'm saying now. And so regardless of what results you are looking for, his divine power. The way you engage his divine power for different situations may differ. But that the factor that is responsible for giving the saints all things is his divine power. The more of his divine power that works in me, the more the possibility of obtaining all things become in my life. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Follow me carefully. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Ephesians chapter 3, please. Spiritual understanding. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Popular scripture. Look up, please, and let's read. It's projected. One, two, read. Stop. Who is the him? God. So who has the ability? God's ability is not in doubt. Now unto him who is able to do uh -huh, abundantly above all that we ask or think. Stop. He's about to introduce a condition that can make all what he just said to happen or not. And the condition is according to the power that walks, not lives, not dwells, according to the power that walks, not according to the power that lives in us. Mm. The possibilities are not according to the power that you possess. It is the dimension of the power that is released. The power that walks, not the power that lives, not the power that resides. Listen to me. That's why we can have the same power we can have the same anointing and our possibilities are different because of the power that works, not the power that is in you. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh, 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 the power that is engaged, the power that is produced in us. Are we together? We can have the same Holy Spirit. But the power that is released through sister A, brother A, may differ. Hence, they are actualizing the possibilities that God said would be. Many times I have found out the issue is really not more power. It is the grace and the understanding to activate the power that resides within you. They did not need to go and bring new bread and new fish. Something was done and that in itself was enough. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Please understand this. It is according to the power that worketh in us. According to the power not lives in us. If God spoke that way, it would be unfair. Because the same Lord is rich unto all. Are we together? We have been made to drink of the same spirit. But the dimension to which we have released the power of God and the investment of the spirit within us 
differ. This is the difference. So my possibilities and your possibilities may differ. The factor is not God. The factor may not even sometimes be the anointing. It is, I have done something to make a greater room for the power to not just live, but to walk in and through me. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So the power that we allow to find expression through us determines the possibilities that come. And there are many ways to make the power work in us. That's why we are spending these seven days to give room. I'll just tell you two quickly and we'll pray. One way that you can cause the power to be at work in you is through enlightenment and transformation. The power of God is limited to your belief system, your paradigm. I've taught you this. According to the power that works, that works, that works. I've given this example here. Some of our fathers, great fathers of faith who lived in the 40s, 50s and 60s, many of them were heavily anointed but because some of them did not go to school, some of them could not speak many languages. Are we together? The limitation in their mindset did not allow the power of God invested in them to be fully manifest. Now, those fathers, as crude as they were, they now anointed other younger people with an enlightened mind, with intelligence, and you see the potential manifesting enlightenment and transformation is one way to activate the power that works within you there are possibilities that will never find expression until they pass through an enlightened mind we'll soon pray come Sam Please look up, everybody. Sam, in this example, is a mighty prophet of God with a great prophetic grace. But Sam is not so enlightened in this example. Are we together? So his understanding of the word is very, very small. Or there's nothing there. And then his general enlightenment in terms of knowledge, in terms of the knowledge about life is small. We both have the same anointing. You are going to see that the possibilities that flow forth from our lives will be very different in spite of the fact that the same Lord is rich unto all. Are we together now? Let me give you an example. Two of you, please come stand. Let's assume that this gentleman and lady, uh, husband and wife, are we together? Now, the Lord is revealing to me, watch this now. Sam can come as a prophet. The divine power is at work in him. And Sam can see a horn on this girl's head. What did he see? And he can see fingers like that of a witch. This is what his vision is telling him. There is no enlightenment to properly translate what he's seeing to the edifying of the people. So he will announce it from the limitation of his mindset. His sight was correct, but the divine power is limited. And he, can, he will just say, Madam, you are a witch and you are a devil. Oga, you married a witch and you've been smiling. Why will your business move forward? And he can even recommend that the way forward is what? This guy has misrepresented what God can do. God can do better than that. But because he is anointed but not enlightened, there is so much power in him, but very little is working. Are you getting that now? The only power that is allowed to work is the power to see. The power to interpret is not allowed. Because enlightenment did not activate it. Now, this guy is still a prophet of God, but he will keep destroying marriages in his church, for instance. Are we together now? Now, stand again. I have the opportunity to now prophesy 
and I'm not only anointed, I am enlightened. Meaning that I understand the systems and the ways of God. Are we together? The moment I see a horn on this precious lady, listen, I know that there is a difference between bewitching there is a difference between being a witch and there is a difference between being manipulated by darkness. When I see this, my understanding helps me to interpret it well. And so I know that the problem is not this lady. She may be connected to something territorial that God is trying to show me. So I separate the influence from the person. Now more of God's power and possibilities can now flow by reason of my enlightenment. And by so doing, I can set this lady free. Are we together now? And then I can redeem this family. Still yet, I can even be more enlightened. And after I deliver them, I know that there is a dimension of deliverance that is not conducted. It is preached. It's called deliverance through knowledge. It is not enough for this lady to be delivered from the spirit influences. I've taught you this she must be reoriented to understand the ways of God to know who she is in Christ to help her understand the principles that make for victory three approaches same anointing his divine power he's able to do this according the power lives in us but how much of it works in you that will determine your result so when your mind expands more of the power of god can flow through you many times people come to me and they say apostle more anointing i say what exactly are you looking for say result i say do you really believe that if i pray for you they don't even listen they say yes sir just just do it and i say, mm -hmm. how many people prayed for you a b c d did anything change no that means that you are like a tap that has refused to open they connected you to a dam but you have limited the water to come by drops are you seeing that now so you are wondering why a bucket has not been full even after two weeks because the water is limited to the opening if i can help you open the more you can fill the same bucket you don't have to change the reservoir that expansion and when there was no more vessel the oil stopped that's why we need enlightenment just because we are spiritual does not mean we ignore enlightenment you can see how for instance god saves this marriage otherwise if this enlightenment is not there and i don't interpret it well this man will go you, do you think will you eat your wife's food if you hear that kind of blind prophecy with no interpretation and then she brings all kinds of things fish fish mermaids with fish say you now brought the one from the sea for me this night you would have even brought cow or something. We continue to make a fool of God's power because the enlightenment that makes that power a blessing is the same thing like power coming from Nepal or Nitel. Are we together? And then you have a wire just caught and somebody just touches it. It was not channeled properly and so it is not controlled well. This is it. You can be a pastor heavily anointed, but because of the low level of your enlightenment, the power of God may not be able to flow. Did you know, let me tell you something. Many dimensions of the spirit of God that is at work in my life is at work in the life of many people, especially young ministers around. And people hate them because there is the same anointing. The interpretation and the system of dispensing that power has been refined to enlightenment so that i can let the power of god flow in a meeting and i can let it flow in a way and manner that relates to the thinking of that ministry hmm. there are people who are very intellectual and seeing the power of god flow like that may create a lot of controversy and so you need to come like paul from the standpoint of a scribe and a pharisee the anointing will have to follow the channel of knowledge 
you are going to have to con to convince them by the soundness of theology and scripture that becomes the host by which that power flows they are able to receive it because the depth of your balance and your theological exegesis will keep them in awe and they will know that whoever must have received this level of intelligence this power must be of god notice how paul made his defense from city to city when he met ignorant people, he just said, this idol is the God you are looking for. When he met intelligent people, he said, no, don't call. I'm a Pharisee. I'm a Pharisee. I'm learned. Everybody say enlightenment. It's very important. You don't go to talk to a team of business experts and, and entrepreneurs and great people around and you just stand and say, don't worry, just use your heart. And right now, as I'm speaking, somebody is going to shout, don't worry, you will not understand, you are unfruitful. They will drive you out of that place. You are anointed, but you are short-circuiting the power because enlightenment has not allowed a greater dimension of the power to work in you. Are we together? The second way you can allow this to happen is through prayer and fasting. Thank you. Prayer and fasting is a system that, among other things, principally deals with the issue of unbelief. But it can expand your capacity in the spirit. It is true. It is true. The disciples could not cast out a certain epileptic spirit. And Jesus told them this kind. That means there are many kinds. This kind, go ahead not accept. Listen, listen. Don't argue with Jesus. This kind, go ahead not. But by prayer and fasting. There were certain people who bound themselves and said they would not eat until Paul died. Prayer and fasting. There are, there are spiritual strategies that can allow more of the power of God that is resident within you to be activated and to be at work in you. When a man sets himself to pray and fast, it's not just starvation. My brothers and sisters, hear me. There is no man I know or woman of God that is being mightily used by God with genuine power, genuine power, genuine power that is not a student of fasting and prayer. It's a joke. There are certain spiritual loads you cannot carry until that stamina is there. Oh God, give me, give me. And God says, this thing will drop and crush you into pieces. But when you get to the place of prayer and fasting, it's like walking out. You may not know the changes are happening to you, but you just continue. So while you are praying and you are fasting, you are praying and you are fasting, many things are happening. And then you will see that there is grace. You may not even know until the day you go for a meeting and they say brother can you come and share in this fellowship and you come as a brother your name is about to change you just stand and say can we all rise up to pray and you find out that people cannot stand up again what happened his divine power god is saying you have given me more space now see what that more space can do let me tell you this when i started out in ministry we're going to pray i notice that certain sicknesses and diseases will never go i never got testimonies in those areas it bothered me for a while i said god what is this there are gifts of healing yes i studied all of them tear lost born and, and at a point in time i studied i studied you know classifications of sicknesses i studied all kinds of rabbinical writings 39 straps on jesus 40 less one i studied them and this thing was not working pregnant women were never getting pregnant if i prayed even me i knew they won't get pregnant yet i was anointed how can people be falling under the anointing and certain possibilities were not coming i said lord what is the key and then god called me and said the anointing is there but your capacity is small i said i know the key Shakataskaba. You would think you are not doing anything. You just continue. You are expanding your capacity. A day will come, you will look at that woman. Whereas you would have prayed before as if you are fixing the tire of a car. Sweating around a pregnant woman to get her pregnant. If this thing is not there, it's not there.
Jesus looks at the epileptic patient and rebukes a deaf and dumb spirit and is done. So we can be singing praise and worship in this place and this brother is sitting on a wheelchair and I come, man of God, man of signs and wonders, just because you saw one or two things in a crusade ground, you don't vet your capacity, just say, in, in my name, they shall cast out devils. And you even have the effrontery to tell the man, you think you are get beautiful. Do you know how long, these guys were coming at, from the hour of prayer, not, not from, from lunch, the hour of prayer. And you would call the name of Jesus and say, stand up. And they're already clapping for you in advance. And you lift the guy and he's shaking. Walk. The guy says, will I lie? And he just says, sit down quietly. Let me tell you what went wrong. Please believe me. It is never the power of God. It is that the level of grace and anointing that needs to flow to correct that thing, your capacity cannot carry it. Now, many men of God will not be humble enough to receive this thing. They will say, this guy doesn't have faith. It's a lie. It's a lie. I always take responsibility for miracles that don't happen. And then as I began to stay with God the more, I started seeing certain possibilities. Newer testimonies and cases. I remember one of the most frustrating one was this HIV thing. That thing would not go at all. And the people who always tell, test themselves and let me know. Sai is still there. Oh. Of course, will, will the people lie? And I got tired. I said, no, something, there has to be something wrong. See, let me tell you, when you love God and love people, you will not excuse lack of results. They will draw you back to the secret place. And I began to pray. I began to pray. I said, Lord, there has to be a way. And the Lord let me know. There are many factors, but the anointing is there, my son. But the capacity is small. You have eaten away some space. Huh? Yes. The power is flowing and food just stands like a customs officer. And the power cannot flow. But by the time you trust God for grace to scatter the walls of gluttony and open up your capacity, you will not even know that that case is represented in your meeting. While there was a time I didn't just used to speak upon people and it will happen. This creative dimension of the prophetic, it was not there. It was not intentional. The results were not repeatable. Many men of God will not open up to you like this and share with you what I'm saying. Because everybody has his reputation. I would speak to someone. People would come and I cannot remember talking to them. Because I'm not, I didn't even expect it to happen. I just spoke at random. Maybe one minor case that was under your grace was quickly answered. But you get to a point where you can tell him, go. I know you will come back with a testimony. My brothers and my sisters, it is not the mouth. It's the spirit. It's the capacity. This is what demons see. When demons look at you, they don't see your head, your shoulders, your knees, or your toes. They see your spirit man. The largeness of your heart. You may look tiny physically, but boy, they see what is there. And you make one decree and you open up doors. I thank God for the grace to do that today. And I thank God for the levels that we continue to press. Because in this school, you never graduate. You just move higher and higher. The day you graduate, you, you, you plateau there and you go down. When I have the privilege to pray with people, I didn't like praying with people before. I like praying alone with God, but not praying with people because of the frustration. The results were there, but they were not many. Just like it's happening to some of you. Man of God, can you pray for me? Say, let's pray. You finish praying, no results, no testimonies. Can you believe God that in these seven days that something will tear open in you? 
huh? that there can be a capacity please help her a capacity a largeness of heart listen to me my brothers and my sisters it is the size that you carry in the spirit hmm? that determines your result i'm telling you this if i pour water on this cup it is only the size of this cup that can take if anything outside that it will just waste away so sometimes it's not more anointing it is oh god expand me expand me expand me i'm tired of this level of testimonies headache 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 here and then all oh, my teeth <clears throat> I, I need to shift nations i need to stand and look over a family and say it has it's, it has come to pass listen to me if you're a man of god here hear me we're going to pray make sure you keep vetting what you are doing don't keep going to people's homes and waking them in the night doing night vigil from 10 to 5 and then at the end of it two weeks later they tell you nothing has happened you say let's do it again please don't frustrate people if that grace is not there go and work on yourself there are some there are some ministry publicity you should not do until you are ready healing service healing 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 bring the sick and we mock ourselves 90 sick people come and only one person who is not even sure he's not there Abba. his divine power this ministry you see my brothers and my sisters is sitting on a large there is capacity in the spirit that makes for this all the people you see come it's not just because they like a man it's more than that there is capacity there is capacity there is capacity there are certain regions you don't do certain kinds of ministries and go scot free the devil will attack you and destroy that ministry I'm challenging many of you. You are anointed, but your capacity is small. Your results show it. Mm -mm. Your words don't have carry power. You, there's too much talk. Too much talk. Too much grammar. Too much talk. Too much grammar. Too much talk. We need to settle down. Get this thing for real. Get real spiritual power. I've already been setting myself during this prayer and fasting to say, Lord, there are, there are dimensions. There are dimensions. Look at the way you have kept your fellowship small because where you stopped is where the fellowship stopped. It can't grow more than you again. Look at where you kept your prayer group because you are small. You continue recycling mediocrity and clapping for yourself. Oh, you are MOG. You are this, whereas there are heights and virgin dimensions in the spirit you know let me tell you when i see men of god sometimes and i see our pride i stand and i wonder i said compared to what result where is the result when there are still families crying where is the result how many times did you pray for people do you know when people drop prayer requests here more than once when i sit down and i hear people saying i dropped my prayer request january i dropped my prayer request february i dropped my it does something to me i'm not saying you should know i'm saying ah, did you have to drop it three times to be answered no apostle there have been too much delay in my life by now i should be at this level at this level but restoration is possible let your mind open that door see when you know who god is you don't, there is no fear and regret in your life because the bible says for we know the rest don't know but we who are in the kingdom and are aware of the systems of advantage provided for by god in christ we know that in a believer's life there is nothing that is really a disadvantage it's true if you were employed as a graduate in 2000 by now, you most likely, with diligence and service minus corruption and wickedness, you probably would be a director by now. Are we together? Yes. 
and now you've not even gotten a job so if you get a job now most likely you are over age already they will not employ you and so you can sit down and say this thing self i'm dead is finished it's over because you have given god you have told god how to move in your life and not allowed him move how he wants to move god if it's must you move this way and god says i want to do more than you can imagine and he will have to make do with the allowance that your mindset allows him but someone can say lord i'm tired of allowing you to pass through my life only through salary thank you for salary but el shaddai where are you answer my family that is the day you will see what will happen one day and it will look to you like a dream someone will call you and say the lord instructed me to transfer 30 million to this family you say please tell efcc before you talk to me Let, let's just be sure you are genuine and they say god instructed me and i'm obedient then you will now know that the testimony of others are not a lie pain can make you think everyone is lying did god really step in like that did god really anoint you like that hallelujah expect god to step into your family expect god to step into your life expect god to put favor upon you the reason why people succeed in this life the favor of god is true expect it life by default and without the assistance of god is impossible to live it's not hard it's impossible you will never be able to walk in the dignity of kingdom integrity and live life as it should be unassisted by god no so he interjects your life with different systems of advantage like mercy like favor like speed like restoration all these things are divine forces that work together to make your life become what the word of god says should become so a woman here for instance who has been barren say for six seven years now if god gives you one child that's good news but that's progress not restoration because you will still have to wait three years get pregnant again wait three years get pregnant you must add 12 years to have the four children so god gives you triplets in nine months now that one is no longer progress that's restoration he has brought nine years spacing in nine months are we together god calculates your salary like arias and brings it through favor in one transfer god shifts you to a level of anointing that you should have walked in had it been your uncle allowed you to be diligent attending church serving in the house of god there are certain levels in the spirit you would have walked in right now but because he stopped you and clamped you down and things didn't look like they were working many things just went down in your life and because of that watch this because of that you got grounded and could not know god fast and god can lead you to an uncommon mentorship an uncommon anointing in six months you will receive a grace that is 15 years old <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> jacob collected esau's birthright he didn't know that esau was supposed to suffer seven years when he collected his birthright esau's own plus his own he served 14 years it's not about exchanging of women it's destiny playing out their family had delay i hope you know from abraham it was a challenge so both of the sons individually whether they was collecting birthright or not they would have paid their seven years watch this but jacob collected Esau. it only played out using women but it still played out that means you can collect someone's speed too you see that it's true sit down please sit down you can come with a load that is supposed to be 10 years according to the normal sequence of occurrence based on the allowance your family gives and you come under the influence of a covenant that forces your life to look like the grace upon that territory it's true find a way of believing what i'm saying i've shown you luke chapter one to tell you the certainty of these things 
it is not those who like you that bless you alone it's those who are directed for everybody to like you do you know how long it takes to like a man sometimes you just need to hear god and obey fast your life requires speed hallelujah there are times because of what god wants to do in your life when he finds out that four people need to be blessed to reach you whether they are praying or not he will hurry them quickly because they are delaying you he will hurry them for your sake when you come for a meeting like this be conscious of four things number one be conscious of every prophetic word that comes relating to your issues of concern be conscious of it when these words come don't think they are just empty speakings the carnal man cannot discern the things of god the word of god is like a tray you have to receive the tray before you receive what is on it are we together now the word of god is a tray it carries miracles carries deliverance carries healings so when you receive the word the engrafted word you now take what is in it be conscious of the prophetic word number two be conscious of the covenant covenant is a very deep spiritual word many people just shout covenant around but they don't even know what it means listen a covenant is a system that commits god and causes him to vow to ensure that a person or an institution continues to receive certain predictable outcomes it's a covenant there is the covenant of answered prayer there is the covenant of god's presence there is a covenant of results every man that god truly calls and every ministry that god truly ordains there are underlying spiritual covenants the platform upon which god put his vow and his integrity that has touching this and this i will make happen it's true also be conscious of the graces you see that the graces that are available within that territory you cannot receive a man's covenant you can only partake of it but you can receive graces you are a pastor you come and your church is grounded you only have 50 members during your annual thanksgiving thank god for that but something is wrong god is a god of increase you can come with hearts open to receive the grace how about hardship things not working well how about your spiritual growth you are at the same level for five years the knowledge of scripture zero health of your prayer life zero you are a man of god and nobody is placing a demand on the grace of god that you have it will frustrate you eventually but there are graces every possibility in the kingdom is governed by an operation of grace when that grace comes upon your life your result shows thou anointest my head with oil the result shows through my cup he does not anoint your cup he anoints your head your cup proves what is on your head are we together now so this is very important thank you and you have to understand the way this works we're going to pray shortly and i need you to know how this works i want you to receive be conscious of the graces not some of you may not need may not need a miracle like miracle from sickness or whatever but understand that when you come it's like an exchange of graces listen the bible says give us please second corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8 please give it to us quickly second corinthians 9 and verse 8 praise the lord read with me please koinonia ready one to read stop 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 god is able to make all grace let me explain that to you please all of you come stand anywhere you want to stand just stand anywhere scatter yourself around don't come close to me just stand watch this call these guys graces the grace for prosperity the grace for favor the grace for speed the grace for spiritual fire the grace for influence watch this access to the hearts of men this is you this is your destiny and the bible says the way we advance is that we need to be in touch with all graces not some 
I can have the grace for prosperity and I'm rich, but I suffer, but I succeed. You are rich, but no man helps you because you don't have favor. You only have prosperity. The proof of favor is not money. It's the loyalty of men. If you do not have access to the hearts of men, you don't have favor. You may have resources. So this guy has prosperity. So he will labor, wake up in the morning, sleep late in the night, eat the bread of sorrow, mix it with hard work, and eventually prosper. But as far as spiritual fire is concerned, the grace that plants in a man the hunger and the passion for the things of God is not in him. So that grace is not there. He has some, but not all. And the part, the grace dimension he does not have, the deficiency of it will show in his life. He is getting richer, but not as his soul prospers. This is the grace he needs. When you pray and intercede for this man now, God will answer your prayer by channeling him to a ministry or a man of God that has this dimension. So that in addition, it will be added to him. Are we together now? Now, listen very carefully, please. Look up, everybody so god is one of the things that happens here is that the spirit of god continues to move like a wind and he scans your life which grace do you need in this season that you do not yet have this is one of the biggest miracle that happens in a miracle service most people do not know you sit under this atmosphere and there is an updating it's like a software god finds out that this level you are entering into there are at least 21 graces but as it is there are only four so while the meeting worship is going prayer is going there is an upgrade that grace so here's what the bible says god is able to make hold my hands so you come for koinonia miracle service dry nothing is on your head and nothing is around your life too because what is around you is a is a report card telling what is on you are we together now you obtain the grace that makes for abundance for the sake and the grace for wealth that works in this ministry forces you to love god while you are wealthy if you receive a grace that makes you wealthy and as you are rising in wealth you are living god that anointing did not come from this ministry the grace for this ministry has been it has been edited through a covenant to ensure that as men rise their hearts also rise for god not the kind of nonsense money that makes you leave god you don't honor anything that has to do with god again no it is as you prosper even as your soul prospers it's babylon that gives wealth that prospers you and diminishes your soul watch this so you receive this grace and then the holy spirit finds out grace for what favor come watch this praise and worship you got this one during praise and worship you didn't even know why you felt like falling you just thought that ah the song was so nice something had landed on your head are we together now this is speed hold me now my dear watch this this is what is happening in koinonia you are sitting down but you just know that there is a weight that glory something is coming on you you can't tell you are not even falling you are not shouting you will look at someone shouting and feel bad and feel like i i wish i'm the person falling whereas the holy ghost is doing very serious things and then access to the hearts of men this is your package for miracle service now you receive this watch this we now share the grace watch this watch this remember you traveled from another nation the uk us kenya wherever and then you just came and at the end of the service satan can even fool you you are from kenya oh i see please sit down madam i see how it's a kenyan uh, god bless you now watch this you can receive this and while you receive it they will share the grace and you will still feel like nothing came on you but you see the exam is not marked in church go out listen please koinonia understand what i teach you and god is able you came for a meeting and you carried this in two days someone who forgot you no listen he does not just remember i've taught you this last week a book is open in the realm of the spirit by reason of the grace that you carry watch this in one week a strange grace for illumination 
you think hold on you think is the spirit of revelation it's not revelation it's speed it's just that speed demands revelation there are graces when you carry they call others too so that they will work well in your life and god is able god is able god is able there are people because of the graces you carry you will sustain the grace to fast for three days for one week remember that was a condition god gave you to allow your spirit allow him do certain things but the fortitude to fast that long was not there so the grace comes and while you wait upon the lord 10 years immediately is released within one month listen if all you see is just physical healings and deliverances you are not seeing well the major part of what caused listen one of the major reasons why god sends people from other nations and other places to this place is number one to be able to stand by the grace he has provided for to solve their problems but more than that to expose you to ancient mantles these are graces that were there by covenant listen there is nothing i carry that is as old as me everything i carry is older than me by far we are only stewards the grace predates us it's a relay we are running others ran it and god added on it and gave us to hold it for a generation to know the certainty of the things whereof you have been instructed please hear me if you believe what i share with you tonight you will marvel and you will wonder you can choose tonight to agree with god that every challenge except it does not have a name that in this place this night god will bring it down we are going to have like 10 minutes of serious prayer now listen please during that time of prayer forget about who is by your left and right forget about me just stay with god and pray passionately for the next 10 minutes lord i came for an encounter i came to receive healing i came to receive deliverance but i came to also attach myself to covenants i came by the spirit to receive graces outside inside online lift your voice and pray be restoration please bring them out quickly 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 let's save time please in the bracket restoration now I speak it by the spirit the power of God is still coming on people recover recover by the spirit recover I stretch my hands recover by the power of prophecy recover Recover years lost. Recover opportunities. E Paris ke barashanda la katariata. Recover in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and declare God is bringing recovery. Let me tell you, you will marvel and wonder that the things you thought has left you, you are about to find it waiting for you in your tomorrow. I speak to you, may that grace come upon you now again. Recovery. Recovery, recovery, Shamana Katabadakata, restoration. I want to take authority over the spirit of delay. I'm seeing many people, your feet is chained in the spirit. You want to make progress, but you cannot make progress. Fire is falling from heaven now. I decree and declare inside, outside, all the overflows. Anyone under the sound of my voice who is under the influence. Of the spirit of delay at the count of three may fire from heaven fall upon those chains one two three i break those chains now be free now from delay be free now be free now be free now, be free now.
I will hasten my word to perform it. I will not just perform it. I will give speed to my word. The word is quick and powerful. I declare again, any family here, any individual under the yoke of delay, I speak to you by the spirit. That yoke is broken now. That yoke is broken now. Broken by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Now I want to pray. Please listen. I have prayed this prayer. And for those of you who have missed it in time past. May God grant you the grace to receive it now. Listen. Truly speaking, there is a grace for speed. Please hear me. A man's lifetime cannot allow the fullness of the purposes of God to be birthed. Some of you gave your life to Christ late already in life. It's not enough to rebuke delay. You must obtain the grace for speed. And watch this. I'm about to pray for people now. And that anointing is coming on people. As usual, you'll find people running by the Spirit. But I need to release that anointing. Father, I stand under heaven in this miracle service. There are people who have traveled from several nations and several territories at the count of three for you and for your family. That dimension of speed where 10 years can be put in one year. I declare right now, let it come upon you. One, two, three. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Speed, Parush Kabarakata. Speed, career speed. I give speed to your life, speed to ministry. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Receive that grace right now. Speed. Hello, Madonna. Hallelujah. Mommy, please look at me, ma. Don't be embarrassed. I don't know you, but I'm seeing strong witchcraft over your family. Where are you coming from, madam? Madam, I'm looking at you. I'm seeing River State. Where are you from? States. Huh? States. River State. Yes, sir. The Lord says I should tell you that from this night things will change in your life she's your mother help that woman please i'm looking at the lord in the spirit i'm putting my hand inside a river and i'm bringing something out and the lord says the destiny of this family in the name of jesus that's the daughter i command by the spirit every planting that is not of the lord i overturn and i uproot now in the name of jesus christ Who is Naomi? I'm hearing a name, Naomi. We have to hurry up. I want to pray for the sick. Naomi. Hello, Kim Madonna. Ah, hello. The Naomi I'm talking about is outside. Where are you coming from? Come, stand. Your name is not Naomi. Is your name Naomi? What's your name? Come, stand. Where are you coming from, my dear? UK. From where? I want to pray for you. Your name is Naomi. Come and stand. We have to hurry up. Hold on. I cancel CS. I, Madam, look at me. I stretch my hands now. I counsel CS by the spirit of the living God. And I decree and declare like the Hebrew women you will give birth. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm saying it again. I correct what I'm seeing. In the name of Jesus. This is what doctors say baby is breached. In the name of Jesus. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I correct it now. May you give birth normally like the Hebrew women. In Jesus name. Let me pray. Ah. 
Are you married? You are backing a baby. Where is the baby? I'm looking at you in a vision. That's why I'm saying, oh, how can this? You know, I'm saying you came to Koinonia. You are backing a baby outside. This is the vision. I'm... You are not getting what I'm saying. Is this? You were backing this baby when I mentioned your case. Huh? Were you backing a baby? That's why I'm saying, are you married? Because you look too small to be a married woman. This is the real person I want to pray for. Bring this little baby. God is, I don't know whose child is this. Your child. But God, this lady you see is going to be a mighty vessel in the hand of God. She looks like a little girl. In the name of Jesus. What's her name? Nicole. Nicole. She may not know what we are doing, but we stand in the presence of the people of God. We anoint this lady. May she become a Deborah to her generation. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My dear, let me pray for you. Where are you from? Kogi State. I want to pray for you. Ah. Immediately she mentioned Kogi State. I saw what I used to see now. Now I'm seeing the map of Nigeria. And I'm seeing the power of God going to Kogi State. Kogi State. I'm praying now. It's a sign and wonder. Every time I see that, if you are from that locality, the power of God comes on you immediately. In the name of Jesus, I command witchcraft associated with that territory. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Hallelujah. Who is Magdalene? Magdalene, my dear, come. In the name of Jesus Christ, I anoint you. There is grace. You look young. But you are going to be a mother to men. This is what I'm saying. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord anoint you and make it so. My dear, I rebuke the hand of witchcraft now. Release her. I'm seeing chains on you. I declare by the Spirit, release this lady now. I'm about to minister deliverance shortly. Release her now. In the name of Jesus. Please bring someone in overflow too now. A lady. The power of God is coming upon that lady. Now, as I speak, overflow to mighty fire of God is coming. Please bring her quickly. We have to save time. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. Come, my dear. The grace that will want to make married men disturb you. Look at me. I come against that spirit now. Not only you. There are five other people I'm seeing. I don't know where they are. But in Jesus' name, there is a, like, like, a, like an, almost like an evil anointing that makes only married people to look for you. In the name of Jesus, by the God of heaven, I lift that negative thing off your life now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. I hear the name Magdalene. I don't know if Magdalene, I want to pray very quickly. We have to pray for the sick. You are the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. Your name is Magdalene. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Jesus! I decree and declare by the spirit of the living God. I'm seeing your feet in mud. In the name of Jesus, I lift you out of this tragedy. By the power of the Holy Spirit. And I speak to this lady. I'm seeing this lady, but all I'm seeing is snakes. Completely. I declare be free now. By the spirit of the living God. 
the Bible says now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty be free right now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost let me pray for you my dear grace for you the favor that is on your life I command it to start speaking it will not only be a name that is on you it will speak right now in Jesus name your sister your name is Magdalene come in the name of Jesus Christ may the Lord bless you look at me the Lord is taking away shame and reproach from your life these two things shame and reproach shame and reproach shame and reproach please stand up I speak to you by the God of heaven the month of November a big miracle is coming to your life a big miracle I lay my hands upon you and I declare in the name of Jesus be free right now why is this girl here this Magdalene come my dear I pray for you place your hand on your head I declare oh God let this chain be taken now I'm seeing a chain on this girl's head be removed now be removed this like the devil wanting to just bring this lady under captivity I remove it right now in the name of Jesus Christ somebody lay your hands on her so anybody just touch her release her now by the Spirit of God there's no place for you take everything that belongs to her restore it and go now now please listen I want to minister deliverance please believe it you may not know the woman from Kenya come it's time for God to change your life please stand up when did you come here uh, yesterday yesterday yes. you came here God is about to turn your life around Amen. Glory. you are still coming and you are coming with four people the next time you are coming Amen. Thank you, Jesus. madam what do you do madam, what do you do I'm a commissioner for human rights commissioner for human rights yes. in Nairobi yes. in in two weeks I'm going to be in your nation I would like to see you Amen. your nation there is a reason why I'm talking I'm not seeing you alone I'm seeing four other people yes. that the Lord wants me to pray for yes. but I want to pray for you madam because I don't know if you believe it or not you have a political destiny as you are like this looking at me you have a political destiny in Kenya and God by his spirit is going to make this happen but another thing is there is also the call of God upon your life you are a woman that love God there is is starting like an intercessory grace and a prophetic grace but you will get to a point where among the graces God will give you is the grace to pray for barren women notice this grace God is going to bring this grace upon you God I'm also seeing you build a charity foundation there is going to be a mighty humanitarian foundation that I see you build I'm seeing food stuff and I'm seeing different things first it will have to do with young girls people who have been abused and so on but I see not only that I see women too women God is going to increase your influence I lay my hands upon you and I declare by the Spirit carry this grace go to Kenya with it go and excel I command the two lift gates of Nairobi and the entire Kenya to be open for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ go with this anointing go and prosper may the Lord multiply your political career and may the Lord prepare you for the mighty ministerial assignment he has for you in the name of Jesus Christ I pray hallelujah praise the Lord an angel of the Lord is standing here someone will shout here under a strong anointing I just saw that grace I don't know first I think until the shout happens I know why God just from here right to the back there is an anointing I just saw a, a very mighty manifestation of the power of God here now listen whether you know it or not if there is anything influencing yours your destiny that is not of the Christ is about to give way right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. At the count of three, hear me. Whether you are inside, outside, 
or following online I want you to shout that name Jesus with understanding it's not just a chant my Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower not a weak tower the righteous run it to it and they are saved I want to pray for you I know you've shouted in other months but great deliverance great deliverance is about to come your way father I pray that every spirit in this place that does not name the name of the Christ that is sitting on the destinies of men and women manipulating their results I stand and call upon the God of Jeshurun the one that rides upon the wings and I declare let there be deliverance at the count of three shout that name Jesus one two three be free now be free now be free now please bring them out be free now overflow one overflow two overflow three all the extension online I declare be free now from ancestry be free from foundation be free from witchcraft bring them out operations of darkness I'm seeing a womb like the drawing of a woman's womb and I'm seeing it close it doesn't just mean physical barrenness it means a spirit that is closing the door of results many people cannot get results but right now that door is about to open and I stand by the God of heaven by the fire of the Holy Ghost everyone's destiny that has been closed so that it will not find manifestation at the count of three let it be open one two three be open now 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 be open now
the Lord is placing listen please the Lord is placing a very strange grace for finances listen to me please I want you to believe it there is a grace for finances and it's coming on many people I'm not asking you what you are doing I'm not asking you what you know I'm telling you what God is doing I stand by the God of heaven and I declare father the men and women that must enter into this dimension as you are showing me at the count of three may that grace rest upon you one two three take that grace now take that grace now take that grace now a strength grace for abundance receive supply from heaven Let things walk in a way that will surprise you. I command things to walk in a way that will marvel you. mighty God a few minutes we are going to pray for the sick now now please listen I'm only going to do this for this overflow and overflow one that's not to mean I'm neglecting the remaining it's just a revelation that God is giving me there are two angels standing by my left and my right and every time I see this God wants me to move listen hear me except God is not God when I pass any road where you are anything that does not name the name of the Christ and any dimension that is not of God in your life it must give way now I only do this for this and overflow one afterwards we are going to pray for the sick please I want you to just believe I don't know why God does these things but I want you to believe that he is mighty and that he will glorify himself father in the name of Jesus Christ glorify yourself change everything that needs to be changed many of you will be receiving impartations that will shift you to dimensions I want you to believe it I will pray not everywhere but there are a few people I'm seeing this happen by the Spirit. Hali Shalatos, Pragados, Krekete Barakushla. I shift you in the Spirit. Every limitation that does not name the name of Christ. I'm praying mantles, anointings by the Spirit coming on people right now. Let that presence of God shift you to dimension. In the name of Jesus dimensions I'm seeing a chain around here I break that chain now I'm seeing a chain around here let that chain be broken now let that chain be broken now let that chain be broken now break now break now break now chains be broken now in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, God is turning your life around. Where are you coming from? Kaduna State. In the name of Jesus. Break now. In the name of Jesus. Be free now. From everything that is not of God. Be free now. Something is breaking here. Something is breaking here. Something is breaking here. Parush I break it now. I break it now. I break it now. I break it now. I break it now by the Spirit of the Living God. I break it now. Mama, I break it now. I break it now. I'm 
possessing an evil spirit just around here i come against you now i take authority over that influence you must go now go now go now go now go now overflow one lift your voice and pray in the spirit now listen please be your brother's keeper you don't have to touch me please be your brother's keeper so you don't enjoy yourself but as i pass here anything that is not of god is about to give way right now thank you jesus go now let it go now let it go now let it go now all times i come against you now in Release them now, release them now, release them now, release them now. I'm seeing what looks like an altar right here. Release them now in the name of Jesus. Harusa Sikete, be free now, be free now, be free now, be free now. The spirit of delay right here is breaking, breaking over someone's family. Be broken now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, be broken now. Be broken now. Beauty and glory to your life. In the name of Jesus. Now watch this. Listen. Hold on, please. Hold on, please. I'm standing here and I'm seeing who is Rebecca. Rebecca. They call you Becky. Rebecca. Just not inside. Here you are. What's your name? Rebecca. Don't worry, it's okay. What's your name? Don't just come out if in the name of Jesus Christ, come. I end oppression now over your life and your family. Oh, you, my dear, your name is Rebecca. Where are you from? You are from are you from Makodi? Benway State. In the name of Jesus. I keep seeing this spirit every time I pray for people. That thing they call Aleku A L something K U. In the name of Jesus, I curse that spirit by the God of heaven. If there is anyone under the sound of my voice who is a victim of that spirit, you are from that region, I stand by the God of heaven. Let it come to an end now. Help them, please. Let it come to an end now. In the name of Jesus. Hold on, please. Right here. There is a gentle man who will be mightily used by God. I just saw a strong mantle from my head resting on someone. I stretch my hands. Lord, I don't know where they are. Paruska Badu Let that grace come on you now. Strange mantle, prayer fire, word fire, illumination in the spirit. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. standing here and I'm seeing a family with a yoke of marital delay I'm seeing something that looks like an arrow just coming from heaven right now let deliverance come now let it come now I'm still moving the hand of God is coming on people right now thank you Jesus thank you Jesus please you don't have to touch me in the name of Jesus right here financial stagnation comes to an end an anointing is coming on someone for your family financial stagnation let it be over now my dear be free now out now someone here the power of god is coming on that person be free now free from everything that is not of god New dimension, new dimensions. I'm seeing an anointing here. New dimension. The old story must leave you. That's what God is saying. I'm prophesying to someone here. The old story must leave you. The old is gone so that the new will come. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where is the woman? Wait, hold on, please. I held someone's hand now holding a photo of a sick patient 
Where is she? Come. Who is this? Where is he? He's in China. What's wrong with him? He's depressed now. If I don't pray for him, I'm seeing him inside a coffin. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, let there be deliverance for him now. What's his name? Ibrahim. This is not only something affecting him. This is something that is influencing the entire family. But I stand by the God of heaven and I set you free. In the name of Jesus, be completely free. And I speak to him, Ibrahim, may the power of God touch you and perfect you now and perfect you forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray for the sick. My friend, this man looking at me, come. Where are you coming from? Huh? You are from Kogi State. What do you do? Are you a man of God? You came here trusting God for fresh fire. Come. You are about to receive it because I'm seeing you from Kogi State. You, where is your church? Look at me, sir. Where You have a church? You are under a church. Hmm. A time will come, God will give you your own work. Now God is preparing you. Be faithful. You will go, but now is not the time. You live now, you will suffer for nothing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't let sincere people come and push you out of the will of God. But surely a time is coming and you will walk in very strange dimensions of the anointing. Father, I lay my hands upon this man. Let his dealings with the spirit progress in the name of Jesus. Not only an impartation, a dealing that produces real power in the spirit. In the name of Jesus, may that grace rest upon you by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. This lady with green, this lady, you, come. The Lord is about to turn your life around in a way that will surprise you. Two things will happen to you. Number one, I'm seeing restoration. God is saying, I should tell you, he's bringing restoration. Number two, I'm seeing the gift of men. Please do listen to my message. Help them on the gift of men. God is bringing people strangely to lift you. I lay my hands upon you and I pray, may this grace be effectual. Carry that grace right now. And you will start having visions. Visions. God is going to start giving you dreams and he will start giving you visions. In the name of Jesus. This is very strange what I'm seeing. Except that I saw it, I will not say it. Stop running away from the call. You are a man of God's wife. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm saying what does not make sense. Stop running from the call. You are the wife of a man of God, a minister of the gospel. The Lord will bring performance to his word. This thing I tell you is a strange mystery. The way God works. But in the name of Jesus, I place the word of God upon that prophecy. It's time for you to not fight the will of God. It's time for you to relinquish your own will. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are going to pray just one prayer point. The Lord is asking me, immediately we do that we'll pray for the sick and we'll start submitting our request where is that young lady that came out with one mama while i was praying for her there's a young lady that was wearing glasses i don't if if you are here you are the one what do you do you are going to be very wealthy come are you a lawyer huh is this your mother where are you coming from madam okay you are the reverse woman this lady you see is going to be extremely wealthy because I'm seeing you a lawyer and you are going to you I don't know what area of law you are going to specialize but I'm seeing you sitting with so many business people this is a lot of business people signing contracts helping people to process a lot of things millions huh? that's what that's where she is right now doing some things abroad she's what that's what she's doing right now where she works that's what she's doing now. Right now, yes, she works. Because I'm seeing God will just cause them to like her. 
it's not every man that is a foolish and a stupid man there are people who are out to genuinely bless yes, and i pray for your daughter and i connect her by the spirit amen in the name of jesus amen. she will find these people amen. and in the name of jesus she will shift her to another dimension amen mama god is saying i should tell you forgive does it make sense to you it's my husband also he's a lawyer but your husband is a lawyer yes yes what was the issue? Nothing is happening. Don't worry, ma. Do you know why you fell under the anointing? You fell on behalf of all the troubles in your... It wasn't just your personal falling alone. There are times that you fall representing all of these troubles because this is not what I'm even saying. God is saying I should tell you to forgive. Forgiveness. Now, it doesn't make sense and God has not given me an interpretation. But let me tell you this. You see, look up. The average person seated here has been hurt by someone. Whether friends, are we together? Uncles, relatives, people you trusted and they betrayed you. Let me tell you something about unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is a terrible spirit. It's one of the master secrets to delay. Unforgiveness. It will keep you in one place forever. You are there angry and annoyed and most of what you'll be angry about is legitimate however you see forgiveness is a type of giving understand this forgiveness is still the, the giving grace that helps men to forgive the only thing with forgiveness is that you give in advance are we together the highest form of forgiveness is tolerance where you know it will happen again and you build a system around it to not hurt you. We live in a society that is so hot conscious. This one hurt me. This one did this. There are too many things that can create offense. The Bible says in nothing should you be offended. It's a choice. Mama, in the name of Jesus, please don't cry. I don't know what it is and why you are crying. But my dear, comfort your mother after the prayer. Eh? In the name of Jesus, what is before you? is greater than anything that has caused you pain and in the name of jesus forgive in the name of jesus forgive i also pray for someone here do you know there are many couples that have not been able to forgive one another in marriages it can last for 10 years 20 years same room same bed but that bitterness especially for the men we don't know that this might be the secret the bible says for dishonoring your wife the consequence is that your heavens will be closed it's not a lie that's why you see men struggle and struggle and simple things become hard because of the propensity for bitterness make up your mind in this miracle service that you will let go and not only forgive but tolerate i wish i can tell you there are some things your loved ones are doing that they will never do again but they will do it every time a door is about to open here offense comes it's a choice i will not be offended are we together father we pray for our daddy in the name of jesus the kind of miracle that god will do in the life of this man let it be so powerful that everybody around will know that this is the doing of the lord i decree it and i establish it in the name of jesus christ there is a gentleman here we are going to pray goodness you see how time just runs there's a gentleman here you are a member of mountain of fire where are you mountain of fire you are a serious brother mountain of fire now please I'm, I'm not just saying you attend don't listen to instructions please right MFM my friend you are serious you come from where MFM Kano MFM Kano how about yes, you Calabar. MFM Calabar how about you Lagos Lagos I want to pray I'm not saying if you are from MFM just come out like that they are particular people it doesn't matter what denomination you are from once you are here huh this is a universal this is a master key it will complement on what every grace and every man and woman of god is doing but i want to pray for you my friend i am going i'm first going to pray for you where are you from i'm from Akwa state there is serious witchcraft sitting on your destiny yes, i hope sir. you are not embarrassed yes sir yes huh? sir 
you need help you have prayed stand up please you are a prayer warrior you can pray you can do fasting huh? sometimes you just need a grace to help you you hear what i tell you i'm going to pray for you if i don't pray for you i'm seeing the spirit of death start sweeping people in your family like that like play like play until he starts killing people but let me tell you don't despise yourself you need a lot of mentorship but you are going to be a mighty vessel in the hand of god this brother you see is very serious with god huh very serious with god you just need the right support impartations and a mentorship system that makes for balance in your life hold my hand father what's your name huh and tony tony in the name of jesus everything that represents witchcraft i join my faith with that of your father and your leader dr daniel odikoya and i decree in the name of jesus be free now i decree by the power of the holy spirit the spirit of death far from your dwelling in the name of jesus christ i want to pray for you who is looking for a job uh -uh, I'm not saying I'm not unemployment. I'm talking to these guys. That I, of course, I know that people are trusting God for jobs. Where did you apply? Huh? Kaduna State Service. The Lord says I should pray for you that they will give you. Do I know you applied for a job? Stand up. Uh, prophecy is powerful. In a moment, God can just change things like that. My dear, let me tell you this. It's not even the issue of Kaduna State Civil Service alone. Huh? God is going to give you unusual influence. It will marvel you. Amen. Are we together now? Hold my hands. You believe what I'm telling you? Yes. Father, confirm your word in a way that will surprise this lady. Let that rejected stone... In the name of Jesus, become the chief cornerstone. Receive of that grace. In the name of Jesus, I speak it so, I make it so, I establish it by the power of prophecy. Let me pray for you. Gentlemen, I don't know if it's you or someone related to you, but there's someone God is giving a job. Someone looking for a job. But I want to pray for you. Father, you called out the gentlemen from MFM Kano and the remaining places. I decree and declare by the God of heaven that everything that represents witchcraft in your life let it give way now in the name of jesus let it give way now even by the power of the holy spirit the lord is showing me a lady i'm not going to ask you to come god bless you but i'm lifting up my hand i'm seeing you know how you cover a bride when you are about to marry before they remove that thing from her face this is what i'm seeing but that one is not pride of wedding this is evil covering your entire a human being with almost no head huh? and the lord is saying i should pray that that veil be torn i don't know who that person is but right now the power of god is going there there, there are many of you i perceive in the name of jesus that veil that has covered you so that no good thing finds you by the god of heaven and in the name of jesus the christ of god I declare that veil torn into pieces now. Torn into pieces now. Inside, outside, online. Torn into pieces now. The last case I attend to and then we we'll begin to pray for the sick. Nothing ever lasts in your hand. This is the problem you are trusting God for. In fact, it's one of your requests. Nothing. Many good things continue to happen, but they never last. If a, if a season of open door comes, three, four months, sometimes men can come into your life or women can come into your life and after two, three months, for reasons you cannot explain, you have never sustained any blessing for up to two years. As it comes, you will see it. Sometimes you will go to bed in the night and you will have a dream. You may see someone come maybe to molest you or to attempt to have an affair with you. This is what I'm seeing. The moment that thing happens, it will not be up to one month and every good thing goes down. But I'm praying right now. 
in the name of Jesus whoever belongs to this category every attachment you have with spirits that are not of the Christ that warrant visitations in the night to molest and oppress you and spy into your liberty I declare by the Spirit of God be free now be free now help them please be free now be free now my dear come you come hold my hands it's your it's a new season for you by the anointing of the holy ghost step into a new season i've touched you I saw you climbing a ladder in the spirit I release you into that dimension in the name of Jesus Christ we have to hurry up and pray for the sick now now please watch this this lady jumping shame and reproach I call it by his name and I command it to leave you now shame and reproach to leave you and let you go in the name of Jesus someone will run by the anointing to me don't stop the person just hold the person this is what I'm seeing by the spirit this is a ministry of signs and wonders why these things I'm not saying to run consciously I'll send you back this is by the anointing please there is order in the house of God order in the church are we together the, the hand of God now as I speak is coming upon you. My soul longs and even thirsts for you. My heart and my flesh cries out for the living God. For the living God. Incline your ears with trembling and tears of yearning to the throne of grace to seek your face I'm burning longing for you I need you I need you I need you I need you, Help me. I need you. nothing no place I declare to all of you that came out by the spirit I shift you go forward now go forward now the power that holds you down I take authority over it in the name of Jesus go forward now I release your families to go forward now in the name of Jesus now please hear me our time is gone we have to be fast now listen for those who will be laying hands on you don't think that because it is not Joshua Selman laying hands on you remember I told you that there is a grace that everyone who is called to serve in this ministry and designated and mandated carries that grace we're about to pray for the sick now now listen please there are three conditions that I will want to minister lay hands on the people myself remember don't tell lies you cannot come to the truth lying are we together don't insist that i just want joshua selman to touch that's not the idea aside from those who are in the main auditorium that i request to come out if you're trusting god for a miracle if you are here and you are suffering from cancer number one number two you are suffering from hiv Number three, you are suffering from barrenness. It doesn't matter what overflow you are in. If you have any of these three cases, please, with those who are in the main auditorium, I want you to join them and come. Otherwise, please, all the overflows, move to your projector screen and stand there all as directed by the ushers or protocol. Anyone trusting God for to be prayed for, for healing right now, I want you to make your way to the front quickly. And then in addition to that the three cases I've mentioned 
you come into the main auditorium and join please quickly we have to hurry up overflow one please walk to your projector stand overflow two i don't know from where now as directed walk to your projector stand overflow three walk to your projector stand um my god i don't know if there's overflow two b then just walk as you are directed somebody should stand in front of them and direct them appropriately please overflow four um also just move to your projector stand or as directed those online following from whatever nation of the world just connect by faith as we pray hallelujah now please watch this our time is gone and we're going to be doing this very fast listen please if you are here and you are yet to write your prayer request but adventure you are coming for the first time and you need an opportunity to write your prayer request please someone help them with a piece of paper or whatever it is that you will need everyone you can pen down your prayer request now when you're done please lift it and there will be ushers PR help them protocol help them whoever needs to help them let's make it very fast overflow one two three those online I believe that theirs has also been collated. We are going to have everything now so that as soon as we are done, we will pray for the request. The moment you are done, please wave it or pass it to the person um, at the aisle where it can be picked. Give them room to write. If you need a piece of paper, you can help your friend or wave your hand. and righteousness Lord you reign King of the You are the ancient of days Lord you reign Help me We cry hallelujah praise the lord thank god we have some hands tonight um pastor jakes and Ejimi will do overflow three since there will be several people there overflow three they'll be ministering to overflow three benga will go to overflow one promise overflow one two um kenny overflow two two a now uh, two a or two b praise the lord isaac overflow to be praise the lord ima overflow overflow what now what is left huh overflow the last overflow where the overflow for okay no overflow to be go to overflow four praise the lord it will have to be a very quick walk because there are several people I'll minister to the people here praise the Lord now please listen please except they want to talk to you prophetically don't worry listen just a touch is all that you need and I want you to believe by faith as soon as they touch you do what you couldn't do head back to your seat unfortunately because of the limited time we may not have time to take testimonies as you would have seen in many of my external ministrations for two reasons one this is a miracle service dedicated to ministering to people if we pray and say if you are healed come out it will take a lot of time we don't have that luxury of time praise the lord so we are doing three things at the same time one we are praying for the sick has, prom has promised okay 
Pastor Alpha, oh, uh, who is in overflow? One, only you, two of you. Okay, Pastor Alpha, join them in overflow. Three, Pastor Femi, uh huh, he, Pastor Femi should go to. Did I give you a place? Pastor Femi, join um, overflow two, two B. Okay, with with Ima now, two B or four. You are in two. Only you. Okay, so um, Femi, please join him in overflow four. Overflow four. Praise the Lord. Just direct them. Father, in the name of Jesus, we stand by this corporate grace. And we declare, let there be miracles right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Please write your request, believing the worship team will lead us through a time of worship while we are doing this. It will be very fast. Afterwards, I will just pray and prophesy to everyone and then we'll try to tie it up tonight but whilst you are sitting make sure you connect by faith you can involve your loved ones let them know that god is moving right now he's blessing people lord we give you all the praise let there be great miracles by the spirit of god in jesus name i pray praise the lord thank you for your patience please rise up on your feet if they are still praying for you where wherever whatever overflow don't worry just just hang on there please stretch your hands to this request as we pray i'd like you to open your mouth and begin to declare by the spirit unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come please lift your voice everyone let's have all the requests here please if there are people who are yet to submit I'd like you to stretch your hands to this request as you declare that these Egyptians that I see today, I see no more forever. Lord, turn impossible situations around in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, release miracles, release solutions, break yokes, oh God. Turn around family situations for your name's sake. Reveal callings, reveal destinies. Let your people find purpose. Let your people find direction. Make sure you are praying. Lord, stay the power of darkness over the requests of your people. In the name of Jesus hallelujah please agree with me in the name of jesus amen. louder amen in the name of jesus amen. father tonight we come to you the god that can answer prayers and lord i decree standing in the presence of your people thousands of people have submitted their requests a representation of their expectations their pain their disappointments their anticipations lord i decree and declare that every spirit that is back of these problems we declare lose your grip now lose your grip now number two I declare that every grace that needs to be released towards you for these requests to be granted by the mercies of the God of heaven we decree and declare by faith we channel these graces to you every human agent whose mind needs to be touched by God to allow this request to be answered in the name of Jesus, we call on the Father of Spirits to touch them on that wise. And every request that remains because of the hardness of the hearts of men, we 
break that hardness now father answer speedily lord answer speedily turn situations around every death sentence represented in this request we declare that death sentence is cancelled in the name of jesus and so father we give you praise because we declare by faith the very faith of the son of god that these requests are met in jesus name as i stand upon these requests i declare by the spirit of faith that in the mighty name of jesus that which god has done now remains permanent in jesus name and i prophesy over you by the god of heaven the egyptians that you see today that pursued you from egypt to the red sea and beyond i declare by the spirit you will see them no more forever no matter how long you have been in egypt if you go out of egypt no going back in the name of jesus between now and the next three weeks may the god of heaven in the name of jesus 21 days was the maximum time of contention in the realm of the spirit i decree and declare it will not exceed three weeks and every request that has been released already but has been hijacked by men and systems i mount pressure on those men and systems to allow this request manifest i mount pressure on those systems allow this request manifest let it be so in the name of jesus give jesus praise hallelujah i'm going to declare the last prophetic word over everyone here please i like you to be sensitive don't be careless about it hallelujah please they can come and pick it i believe in the power of prophecy the spoken word is also creative it can make things happen it not only reveals what will happen it makes things that has no business happening to happen in the name of jesus christ i declare over you please hear me by the God of heaven, every door that has been closed over your destiny, I stand here as the servant of the living God. I force that door to open now. Everyone trusting God for a job, a meaningful job, not a nonsense job that does not have honor. I pray now. A job that will not take your relationship away from God. A job that will not make you compromise. Receive that job in the name of Jesus. I pray for your spiritual life. The kind of fire that you need on your prayer life in this season. I speak over you. Receive fresh fire. Access. To revelation access to light receive it in jesus name every helper of your destiny who must show up in this season to make the word of god to come to pass i command them to appear now I preached last week on the book of remembrance let me pray that prayer in the name of Jesus I open the book both in the heavens and in the earth and I declare every good thing you have done to any man on earth I compel remembrance now I compel remembrance now every kind of barrenness biological barrenness financial barrenness career barrenness ministerial barrenness i cause it now and i command it to leave you let me pray over the spirit of death 
any family here appointed unto death i speak by the god of heaven be free now number two every family appointed unto hardship that you will never see the goodness and the salvation of the lord i cancel that pronouncement now listen by the blood of the eternal covenant in the name of jesus i cause every foundational issue that causes hardship and pain and retrogression over your life now the kind of honor you have never seen in your life i speak to you by the spirit step into it let me pray for favor i will never stop praying this prayer till you carry it bodily access to the hearts of kings access to the resources of kings receive it now by favor restoration of visions dreams listen there are many of you who used to have dreams and encounters nothing crosses over you without your eyes seeing it but it looks like you are becoming like eli your eyes becoming dim i pray for you i fan back your vision to flames in the name of jesus every pattern that is in any family you see it in your siblings you see it in your life i declare let it be broken now anyone in ministry here please hear me i speak to you as you return back to your various stations let fire fall upon your altar I pray for everyone in business dying business dead business let it come back to life now please don't just say amen believe creation is happening everything God showed you from the beginning of this year and told you should have entered your hand by now but the devil is adding 30 extra years to your 400 years i push you by prophecy in the name of jesus christ hear me i speak to you by the god of heaven any man that fights you goes down instantly And anyone holding what is yours and has vowed not to release it in the name of Jesus may God humble the pride of wicked men anyone who has said over my dead body for this family to move may God answer their prayers I open the door of favor towards every family here in the name of Jesus all our ladies and all the women that are due to give birth I declare give birth like the Hebrew women in the name of Jesus let me pray for all the gentlemen our time is gone but I must pray for you the grace that establishes a man early may that grace rest on you for those of you who are still 30 years 35 40 50 still loitering your parents house eating your mother's food not just as honor but as a necessity in the name of jesus by the god who is the lifter of men I declare may that reproach live your life now anyone here called barren 
in jesus name by november miracle service you come here pregnant already let me pray for every ministry here every prayer group every platform intercessory groups churches fresh grace for you in the name of jesus christ the final prayer i'm going to pray for you honor is what makes men reward you listen 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 honor is the ability to discern the ability to celebrate and the ability to reward men for their uniqueness you can be as anointed as anything but when honor is not on you men will only just celebrate you from afar but you will never live a rewarded life i pray the prayer that jabez cried unto god for the bible says and jabez was more honorable than his brethren i pray for you everywhere you find yourself rise above your contemporaries let me pray the last prayer point don't say it's not important there are people here your life is not advancing the kingdom in any way this is not altar call this prayer for you to settle down and let your life advance as far as god is concerned you are time on earth if your life does not find a space to advance the kingdom not your work not your service not your worship it looks like nothing about your life there is no kingdom come represented in your life you are just living for yourself hand to mouth to marry have children maybe go to school get a job i redirect your focus now in the name of jesus christ may your life and everything involved around it cause the kingdom the power and the glory of god to be manifest in the name of jesus and every other request here whether mentioned or not i stand in agreement with you in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god receive it as a testimony in the next one minute whether you are in overflow one two three or here you are yet to make jesus lord of your life genuinely please no movement and or you are saying apostle i've handed my life over to jesus but for some reason things have just scattered around my life and i don't seem to gain any footing and bearing and i want to make my way right with god please whether you are in overflow one overflow two the main auditorium aside from overflow three please i'd like you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand here right now koinonia celebrate them don't wait for anyone to come first quickly if you're coming please come and stand come and stand apostle i'm not sure if i'm saved or not join them quickly join them quickly koinonia is this the best you can do join them quickly scripture said you must be born again if you're coming from outside please make it snappy make it as fast as possible hallelujah i salute every one of you here please lift your right hand believe that jesus is here standing before you gentlemen and ladies please join them very quickly if you're coming please come quickly 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 you're coming come very quickly thank you now say this after me say it passionately say it truthfully believing that jesus is here and he will honor your confession of faith say after me lord jesus tonight i believe that you are the son of god i believe that you died for me i believe that you rose again for my justification tonight i ask you to be my lord my savior and my king i receive eternal life into my spirit i receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and i declare that from tonight and forever 
I move forward ever, backward never. These three ladies didn't pray the prayer. Somebody direct them and let them pray that prayer. The prayer is already finished. You, this yellow girl, and those two, those my sisters. Usher or any of you, are you not Christians? Direct them. Someone pray the prayer with them. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare right now, begin to walk in victory in Jesus' name. I introduce you to the ministry of the Holy Spirit. You will know him. You will walk in his ways. You will command strange results in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. I call you tonight the righteousness of God. I call you that you are part of the family of heaven. In the name of Jesus. All of the people who are just coming, you're welcome. God bless you. Just join that group that they are praying with. And just pray the prayer that they lead you to pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, thank you for these precious ones that you died for. I decree and declare that tonight you receive by faith the abundance of grace, the gift of righteousness, and I declare that you reign in life. Go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. All of you in concert, I want you to follow the lady smiling at you with her hands lifted. Everyone, please follow her. And um, they will direct you to a few people to just follow. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially, and otherwise. I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain.